الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علم ينفعنا ولا تجعل فيما علمتنا وبالا علينا إن شاء الله تعالى today we're going to be taking the tafsir of Surah Qaf إن شاء الله تعالى I want to be in the الكريم uh, finish it uh, the tafsir of the surah uh, in one sit I haven't done that before um, last Ramadan I was meant to finish it and we took maybe first seven or six verses for the month of Ramadan so we didn't really go through all of it but I'm forced today to go through all of it so that means I have to omit and get rid of so much information that I did want to share uh, inshallah ta'ala Surah Tuqaf, according to the strongest opinion, and even some scholars transmitted a consensus on it, like Ibn Atiyah and others, that Surah Tuqaf is a Surah Makkiyah, it's a Meccan Surah. It's a what? Meccan Surah. So if it's a Meccan Surah, it means that it came down before the Prophet migrated to what? Medina. That's the strongest definition of what Makki means. Makki is what came down, okay, before the Prophet migrated to Medina. There are differences of opinion of what other scholars have said that Mecki means, but the strongest opinion is that Mecki, this surah is, surah is Mecki, if you hear that. It means that this surah came down before the Prophet migrated to what? Medina. So even if he wasn't in Mecca and he was in somewhere else, but it was before the Hijrah, it's still going to be considered Mecki. So if he came down in Ta'if, okay? But it was before the, uh, the Hijrah to Medina, it's considered what? A Makki. Um, so the Surah is Makki according to that, inshallah ta'ala. This Surah is from the Surah of the Quran. Okay? It's from the Surahs of the Quran which start with what is known as Al Huruf Al Muqatta'a. Al Huruf Al Muqatta'a. Al Huruf Al Muqatta'a are these disconnected letters. Noon, Qaf. Alif la mim, alif la mim ra, sad. You see them start with some surahs of the Quran. What are they called? Huruf, al huruf al muqatta'a. Huruf al muqatta'a, how many of them are there? Yeah? How many huruf al muqatta'a are there in the Quran if we look at it all? So if you want to remember it, you can remember it like this. Write it down. Nasun Hakimun Qatiun Lahu Sirun. So let's count it together. Nasun Noon and Sad. Nasun Noon and Sad. How many is that? Two. Nasun. Hakimun Ha Kaf Ya and Mim. How many letters is that now? Four plus the two is what? Six. We've got six there. Nasun Hakimun. Qati'un Qaf and Alif Ta and then Ayn Qati'un Qati'un which is four Qaf Alif Ta and Ayn four so how much six plus four ten Qati'un Lahu La Manha makes it what twelve Qati'un Lahu Sirun and Sirun is what? Two. Seen and a what? Ra. Together is how much? 14 letters. <coughs> there are 14 disconnected letters in the Quran. Are we all together, brothers? How many letters are they? 14. So now you, if somebody asks you these letters, how many are they? What are you going to say? 14. Do you know how many surahs in the Quran it starts with? 29 surahs in the Quran, correct. 29 surahs in the Quran start with the hurufu. Huruf al muqatta'a. So 14 letters and 29 surahs. Are we all together? Let's go back to what we just mentioned. Nasun hakimun qatu'un lahu sirrun. The scholars, when they put this together, they said, what does it mean? It means nasun, a text. Nasun hakimun, a wise text. Nasun hakimun qatu'un, it disc, like it breaks. 
lahu sirrun. There's a secret behind it. صح? That's what it means. It's a nasul hakimun. It's words of wisdom. Behind it is a secret. Okay. Does anyone know what the meaning of these huruf are? Saad, qaf, alif, lam, mim. Does anyone know what it means? Yeah? So there's difference of opinion. By the way, if you hear somebody say, I know what the meaning is, and they give a meaning to it, you shouldn't be shocked because some of the Sahabas did try to give meanings to these things. Are we all together? Some of the Sahabas, like Abdullah ibn Abbas and others, they did explain these huruf. But the strongest opinion is, the strongest opinion is, that this is from the knowledge only Allah withheld. It's mimma sta'thar Allah bi'ilmihi. Allah withheld the knowledge of these letters. Okay? Allah knows subhanahu wa ta'ala what he means by it. Does it have a meaning? Yes. Do we know what these meanings are? No. And it falls under the ayat which are mutashabih mutlaq. The mutashabih mutlaq means its knowledge and its meaning is unrestrictedly known. That's an opinion. Are we all together? A group of scholars, they said, and we can just, for today alone, we can just study huruf al There's so much to take from it. But we're not going to go through it. We're going to finish the surah, insha'Allah ta'ala. I'll try my best. Huruf al some of the scholars mentioned, like Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, also ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, they mentioned that no one would ask the meaning of a letter. Why would you ask the meaning of a letter? You should ask the meaning of a word. And these huruf are letters. They're not words. Hence, that's why there is no need to look for a meaning. If somebody said to you, Alif, and you say, what does that mean? Or I said to you, Ba, and you said to me, what does that mean? Nta, what does that mean? Does that make sense? The meaning comes from what? Words rather than letters. Sah, brothers? That being said, Lakin, there is a wisdom behind it, Lakin. The scholars mention the purpose of why Allah put it then. If we don't know the meaning, what's the purpose then? The purpose is to challenge the Arabs who claimed يعني, complete eloquence. The Arabs were claiming fasaha. They were like, we're the most eloquent of people. So Allah is saying to them, Qaf, the letters that you guys knew. Don't you know what Qaf is? Yes. These are letters that you guys are used to. Alif, Lam, and Meme. Those letters that you guys use in your language. Here it is. And a lot of the times, maybe every time, Majority of times, once or two, you might find otherwise. The Quran mentions these letters, and after it mentions the Quran. Majority of it. Alif la mim, dhalik al kitab wa la rayba fi. Here, qaf wal Quran al majid. Ta ha ma azalna hadha al Quran. All the time, what is mentioned? Ma azalna alik al Quran li tashqa, sah? We have not sent down the Quran. So then there's a mention of the Qur'an right, right after it. Are we all together, brothers? Majority of the times. This is an indication of what? What does it show? That is to sh make the Arabs feel this is the ultimate challenge. Is i'jazuhum, is to challenge them. Here's the qaf, alif lam mim. You know these letters. Ayn seen qaf, kaf. You know these letters. Come with the likes of it. And Allah challenged them, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, In another place, Allah says, In another place, Allah says, So it's a challenge to them. That's why Allah mentions these words, uh, Qaf. Are we all together, brothers? A challenge. It's a challenge you can put towards the people who memorize the Quran, right? Which is, <coughs> connect Qaf with Wal Quran al Majid. Connect it. Don't, just, don't stop. Hey. Is it Qaf Wal Quran al Majid? Or is it Qaf Wal Quran al Majid? Or Qaf Wal Quran al Majid? What is it? Yeah? Homework. Homework. 
how do you connect it if I wanted to connect it? Sah? Sah, brothers? So this is huruf al This is what, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to take from uh, the meaning of it. This surah, surah Tuqaf, what does it talk about? First of all, it's known as surah Tuqaf. Surah Tuqaf. It's also known as Qaf, as a name for it. Okay? And also, it is also called Surah Al Basiqat. It's also a name for it, Surah Al Basiqat. You you see that in when we come to the ayah, Wan Nakhla Basiqat. Okay? It means that. As I mentioned again, this Surah is what? Makkiyah. It's a Meccan Surah, strongest opinion. Why did we choose Surah Tuqaf? What was the reason for choosing Surah Tuqaf? The reason is because. Number one, the majority of the Prophet ﷺ's salah, okay, majority of his prayers, it would be a lot of the prayers that he led, it would be, bin, it, was from, it would be qaf below. So those brothers who can't memorize the Quran and are not hufad and haven't memorized the entirety of the Quran, at least memorize from surah to qaf to nas. And you can lead that a lot of the times in the salah. Maghrib, Isha. Are we all together brothers? Because there are nice lengthy surahs in there, there's also that middle and there's also that short surahs as well. From Qaf to Nas I'm talking about. Are we all together brothers? Another reason why we chose this is because the Sahabas, they used to read on the seventh day. They would start Qaf to Nas. They would read at one day. The entirety from Qaf to Nas. As you know the Sahabas used to finish the Quran how often? Every seven days. They used to finish the Quran every seven days. The first day they would read Surah Al Fatiha, Baqarah, Ali Imran, and Surah Al Nisa. That's the first day. Are we all together, brothers? That's called what? The first day. The second day they start from Ma'idah. And they will take it up to Surah to Yunus, the second day. From Surah to Ma'idah up to Surah to Yunus, second day. The third day, they will start from Surah to Yunus and they will take it to Surah to Isra. That's the third day. Is everyone with me? The fourth day, they will start from Surah to Isra and they will take it to Surah to Shu'ara. That was the fourth day, right? The fifth day, they will start from Surah to Shu'ara and they will take it to Surah Safat. Which day was that? The fifth day. The sixth day, they will start from Surah to Safat and they will take it to Surah to Qaf. And on the seventh day, they will start from Surah to Qaf and they take it to Surah to Nas. The Quran will finish in those seven days. This is called what? This is called, yani Qaf to Nas is called Hizbul Mufassal. Qaf is considered Al Hizbul Mufassal. The strongest opinion is that this is the 48th Surah, right? When you count, huh? you're going to come to. 48th surah, Hujurat, and then Qaf starts from there. Now we all together, brothers. This is the strongest opinion that the Hizbul Mufassal. How many surahs are in the Quran? Yeah? 114. If Hujurat finishes at 48, what does that prove to you? The majority of the surahs in the Quran are in where? Qaf down. Does that make sense, brothers? So if you memorize from Surah to Qaf down, you've actually memorized more Surahs of the Quran than Qaf upwards. And I'll tell you this, the truth. It's actually more harder to memorize from Qaf down than it's to memorize from Qaf above. Does that make sense? Or would some of you guys disagree with me? You disagree? So, so, huh? the ch it's more challenging to memorize these small Surahs, by the way, then it is these lengthy surahs that have long pages and long ayat. They seem to be easier than these bottom chapters of the Quran. 
For me, definitely, I, I found that to be the case. Who agrees with me? That the naam, qaf down. So if you, mashallah, reach, brothers, if you actually reach Surah to qaf, you've done a lot, Allahum barik. Even that though it's how many ajza? Amma, tabarak, qad sami Allahu qawla allati, Surah al dhariyat So how many is it? Qaf is only the surah above it. So how many ajza have you memorized if you start from Surah Al-Nas, uh, surah al-nas upwards? Yeah? Only four ajza. But it's more surahs in there. And it's more ayat which are very mutashabi. So, And if you get there, brothers, Allahumma barik, you, there's no need for you to feel like you're not competent to finish the Quran. You're sharp. Allahumma barik, finish it off. Carry on. Are we all together, brothers? So inshallah ta'ala, you guys, next time I come, inshallah ta'ala, you guys are going to say, all of you guys remember Surah Tukaf. Huh? Brothers, work towards that, inshallah ta'ala. If you've already memorized it, that's good. Also, the reason I chose this surah is because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to recite in the Salatul Fajr. Okay? The Prophet used to recite Surah Tukaf, Wal Quran al Majid. He used to. Also, this is a sunnah that's not done. A lot, a lot of people don't do. It's a kind of left sunnah. But I, I'd encourage those of you who do khutbah to do this. The Prophet used to come to the pulpit on Friday and he would only recite Surah Tuqaf. Imagine that. That's it. You stand up. You say, Amma ba'du qaf wal Quran al Majid. And you read it all to the end. On that, on that pulpit. And you. And when you finish the surah, you go down and you lead the people in the salah. Umu Hisham was a female companion. She said, Hafidhtu surah tuqaf min fami Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I memorized surah tuqaf from the Prophet's mouth. He used to read it on the pulpit, on the mimbar. I memorized it from him. And why is that the case? It's because surah tuqaf has so much knowledge in it about Akhirah and the Day of Judgment has so much meaning in the ذَٰلِكَ لَذِكْرَىٰ لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ أَوْ أَلْقَسَّ هُوَ شَهِيدٌ يعني الصورة عظيمة and you're going to see this inshallah ta'ala today it's got so much knowledge and gems in it are we all together brothers? this surah mainly focuses on the topics that it deals with is as follows you can all write it down number one the first thing that it, the surah deals with tackles, speaks about is number one it wants to prove to the people that the Quran is a miracle. So that's the first letter. Qaf is saying, this is it. Challenge this book. So the first thing, Surah Tuqaf, is a ijaz uh, of the Arabs, who were poets, by the way, who are eloquent people. Are we all together, brothers? The second topic that the Surah deals with, the disbelievers were in a state of shock and disbelief. Okay? and fascination that a warner would come to them from amongst them okay they were like no we, this we can't accept we're going to tackle that when we come to how can a warner from amongst us that we know how can he come to us and warn us about Allah and warn us about Jahannam and all of that so the surah is dealing with those people inshallah we're going to see them in great details also the surah deals with, which is the third, ba'th. They never accepted the resurrection. Then it's like, are you really telling us that if I become, يعني الرمم, I fin the earth swallows me and I perish, are you really telling me that Allah is going to resurrect me again? And to the extent that the, one of them, he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he took, a, from the, he took from the earth and he went to the Prophet's face and he blew this earth in the face of the Prophet and he said to him Muhammad, are you really claiming that this Allah is going to make it back into a human being again then the ayah came down and the Prophet are you really giving Allah an example by picking up earth and saying this did you forget who created you from the beginning nothing is hard for Allah but if anything was hard 
it's always harder to start something rather than continue something. Sah? But nothing's hard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how did you come to that? So Allah is going to deal with them inshallah ta'ala and they're going to be dealt with in this uh, here inshallah ta'ala. Also the fourth uh, thing that the surah deals with it tells us about how the previous nations disbelieved in their prophets and their messengers <coughs> and what was their outcome which is telling us basically if you guys follow that path and you disbelieve in your prophets you go against what they told you your path is also going to be like this as well so when you hear that and you see that it'll scare you كذبت قبلهم قوم نوح we're going to see inshallah ta'ala and we're going to also see وَأَصْحَابُ الرَّسِّ وَثَبُودُ who are they? we're going to see that وَعَادُ وَفِرْعَوْنُ وَقَوْمُ لُوتُ we're going to see all of that inshallah وَإِخْوَانُ لُوتُ we're going to see all of that inshallah ta'ala they all disbelieved in their what? they all disbelieved in their prophets that's what Allah says كُلٌّ كَذَّبَ الرُّسُلَ فَحَقَّ وَعِيد all of them they disbelieved in their prophets and their messengers and the punishment was severe does that make sense? so we'll talk about that as well inshallah and the surah deals with that as well also Allah talks about the fifth is the initial creation of the human being how we were initially created from the start Allah talks about that subhanahu wa ta'ala and how he is able to do that afa'ayina bil khalq al awwal were we tired were we fatigued when we first created you the answer is no so Allah talks about it there inshallah ta'ala also Allah ta'ala he talks about how he knows what's inside us that we really can't hide anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the sixth point sah وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ So we're going to learn Allah's, in, Allah's infinite knowledge and that He knows every single thing and we're going to touch on it there inshallah inshallah ta'ala The seventh uh, thing that the surah deals with is we're going to learn about uh, what, we, what you're going to learn today is called Al-Qareen Al-Qareen is uh, angels that are going to stay with you stick with you and they're going to write your actions documenting everything you say and do and how we are absent-minded when it comes to these qareen they actually can see us imagine you were around all the time a righteous slave of Allah was next to you would you do certain things you're doing right now or you would you say certain things that you say but you you, you have angels they're writing everything you don't really care you just say what you want you do what you want you even go to the wrong places and they're writing that and you make these angels that are righteous slaves of Allah the lowest of those that look at you because you didn't respect them you wouldn't do this in front of certain people but here, here it is you do it in front of these angels so then it's, it's going to put that fear and that concern and that uh, in, in you so we're going to touch on that inshallah ta'ala when we come to the ayah وَقَالَ قَرِينُهُ هَذَا مَا لَدَيَّ عَتِيدِ until we reach مَا يُبَدَّلُ الْقَوْلُ لَدَيَّ وَمَا أَنَا بِظَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيدِ we come to that inshallah ta'ala the eighth point inshallah ta'ala is Allah tells us about Jahannam we're going to learn about Jahannam and the punishment of Jahannam and also in there Allah also does mention uh, the, the, uh, not just being scared and also being hopeful that inshallah ta'ala if you work hard you exert the effort Jannah is going to be your place inshallah ta'ala here Allah mentions يَوْمَ نَقُولُ لِجَهَنَّمَ هَلِمْ تَلَأْتِ وَتَقُولُ هَلْ مِنْ مَزِيدِ وَأُزْلِفَةُ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدِ we're going to touch it on it there inshallah ta'ala so Jannah and Nar we're going to learn a little, about, a little bit about it Number nine, <coughs> Allah reminds us, which is the ninth point. Allah Taala, He reminds us in the surah to take lessons and reminders, not to be stubborn people and say we know it. But when you get these advices given to you, that you really take it on board. Allah talks about that. Subhanahu wa Taala, He says, "Inna fi dalika ladikra liman kana lahu qalbun aw al qasma wa huwa shahid." We mentioned that. That all of those things Allah talked about open your heart and mind and inshallah there when we come there we're going to talk about what are the things that can block a person from not benefiting from advices so we'll touch on it there inshallah ta'ala the tenth uh, thing that the uh, the surah deals with is how the ability of Allah ta'ala is how powerful Allah ta'ala is and that Allah created the seven heavens and the seven earths we talk we will talk about it there وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Allah says we created the samawat and the ard وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا we created what is between it Allah says فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ وَمَا مَسَّنَا مِنْ لُغُوبٍ 
we did it in six days and we didn't get tired. So inshallah ta'ala, that's the 10th. The 11th and the final point, Allah addresses the messenger alayhi salatu, alayhi salatu wassalam. Uh, Allah addresses him and says, Muhammad, yes, you are finding a lot of resistance from the people. Yes, they are disbelieving you. Yes, they are rejecting your message, but be patient. Do tasbih, exalt Allah. You're not alone on this path. There were other prophets that came before you. They also were tested. Fasbir ala ma yaquluna. Be patient with what they say to you. Wasabbih bihamdi rabbika qabla tulu'i shamsi wa qabla al ghurub. So the Prophet was told, be patient and exert effort in acts of worship. So these are the 11 points that we're going to be doing, uh, inshallah ta'ala, or the surah is going to discuss, inshallah ta'ala. So that's one of the reasons why we think this surah, inshallah ta'ala, is the best reminder that you can be given. So it's a reminder, this surah is full of all of that, inshallah ta'ala. Hey, yeah, who's written uh, all of it? Put your hand up if you've written all the 11. Okay, let's go through it again, inshallah ta'ala. <coughs> the first one, inshallah ta'ala, what was the first I mentioned? Yeah, put your hand up and then I'll, I'll select. Yeah, the first one was what? Yeah? Beautiful. The first point was Allah is the first letter it starts with is qaf. So it starts with to make the disbelievers and the eloquent Arab speakers recognize the magnitude and the weight of this book, the Quran, and how eloquent it is. So that was the first thing. And to show them that they're no way going to be able to come with the likes of this Quran. Are we all together, brothers? The second one was what? Second point. Habibi. So the second was, Jazakallahu khayran. The second is that um, the disbelievers being fascinated and shocked that a warner from amongst them would come forward and warn them of Allah and the day of judgment and etc. The third was what? Habibi. The, was the third one as well? Beautiful. Jazakallahu khairan. The third one was their disbelief of the resurrection. Allah is addressing that subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَفَلَمْ يَنظُرُوا Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala إِلَى السَّمَاءِ فَوْقَهُمْ كَيْفَ بَنَيْنَاهَا وَزَيَّنَّاهَا وَمَا لَهَا مِنْ فُرُوجِ Allah mentions it in the, those verses. And inshallah we're going to touch on that. All of that. So Allah tells them, look at the sky, look at the heavens, look at the earth, all of that. And Allah says, look at the vegetation that's coming from the ground. When رِزْقًا لِلْعِبَادِ you see that land? Was it barren yesterday? Yes. It was an earth that was barren. Khalas. There's no vegetation. Nothing was able to come out of it. Sah? Rain came down from the sky. Yes. That rain was able to bring out of that land vegetations and greenery. Yes. That's the same way we're going to create you guys again. After you guys are dead. That land was dead. We gave it life. And here it is. And Allah does that a lot in the Quran where he compares resurrection with the cycle of life. The rain coming down, the earth is dead, and etc. This is something you can use in your da'wah when you talk to them about it, etc. <coughs> what was the fourth? Habibi. So the fourth, mashallah, Allahumma barik. I said it fast and you guys have written it all, Allahumma barik. The fourth one was the previous nations. Allah is telling, taking us back. Why is Allah taking us back to the previous nations? Because our character should be as Muslims. Al-Hakimu man itta'adha bighayrihi. The wise one is the one who takes lessons from other people. Do you really want to be successful in life, brothers? Even in the world, in the world, the corporate world. Not that I'm successful in that regard. Okay. But I'm just saying, a, 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 a principle is, you want to be successful, make sure you learn from other people's mistakes. Don't say, I need to do that mistake myself in order to know it. And that's so common amongst a lot of people. Now, I want to experience it for myself. Why would you waste two years of your life trying something that's been tried and it's been put to the test and a lot of people failed on it? Why would you go and do it again? So that's what Allah tells us about the previous nations. He's telling us, look, look, listen. The path that you guys are on, this dangerous path that you guys are on, disbelievers. People came before you and did this. And I destroyed them. And hear their story. These are the nations. So you know about them. And Allah tells them this story about it. Why are you then going to now do it again and get punished the same way? Because Allah's sunnah doesn't change. And the ways Allah deals with His creations, 
لا تتبدل ولا تتغير it won't change so that's also another benefit that we take from the surah inshallah ta'ala the fifth habibi the fifth Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he talks about the initial creation of the human being okay that we are from where Adam and Adam was created by who Allah tabarak wa ta'ala we're not from monkeys and okay we're not from that and that we are from Adam and Adam is from Allah is the one who created them. So we, we're going to learn that, inshallah, al khalq al awwal bi idni lahi kareem. Number six, Habibi. Number six, we're going to learn Allah's knowledge, how Allah knows everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers, wallahi, that point, inshallah ta'ala, when you learn that point, it's going to frighten you about your actions. Ilmullah is wasa. Wallahi, if you just ponder on this, that one characteristic of Allah, al alim, the most knowledgeable, the one who has infinite knowledge, Plus Allah knows what hasn't happened. If it were to happen, the way it would happen. Imagine that. It's not happened. It's not even going to happen. But if it was to happen, Allah knows how it's going to happen. And Allah mentions that in the Quran. بَلْ بَدَى لَهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُخْفُونَ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَلَوْ رُدُّوا لَعَادُوا لِمَا نُهُ عَنْهُ وَإِنَّهُمْ لَكَاذِبُونَ When the disbelievers come the day of judgment and they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if they can be returned back to the earth and they can rectify their situation, Allah says, if I was to return them back to the earth, they would go back to exactly what they were doing before. The, are we all together, brothers? It's not like they will be returned to the earth. It's not like Allah is going to send them back. He won't. That's Qiyamah now. The time has gone. Don't cry over spilt milk. Khalas. It's over now. But Allah knows that if He was to send them back, they would not rectify their situation and that they're lying. Wow. When you think about that, you're like, Allah's knowledge is like that. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the, inshallah ta'ala, the sixth one. We're going to, uh, is that the sixth? The sixth was in the knowledge of yeah, it was the knowledge of Allah Taala. Okay, and number seven, hey, Habibi. Yeah, yes, you, you. Beautiful, mashaAllah. The seventh is we're going to learn about Al Qareen, those who are always with you, the angels that write everything that you say. Inshallah, we're going to touch on that as well. Inni lahi kareem. Hey, the eighth, Habibi. The eighth, inshallah ta'ala, is going to be about Jahannam and Jannah simultaneously, inshallah. That's where we're going to take it. Jannah and, uh, Jannah and Jahannam. What are they and what are they like? So here is going to come a tarheeb wa tarheeb. Tarheeb is to frighten you and scare you and say, look, Jahannam doesn't get full. Jahannam always just wants more. When Allah says to Jahannam, Halim talat, are you full? He says, Halim mazid, is there more? It frightens you and inshallah we're going to touch on Jahannam and, and a bit about its description. And then you are scared of Jahannam and you run away from it and then you run towards what? Jannah. And Jannah is Targheeb, encouraging you to go to Jannah. Inshallah. Number nine, Habibi. Huh? The ninth, inshallah ta'ala, is to take lessons. That all of this is not just, wow, this ayah has got so much eloquency in it. Wow. It's actually Ira wa Ibar, lessons and reminder so that you go home and then you act upon it and you teach your family about it. Surah Tuqaf is one of those surahs. Number 10. What was number 10? Hayy Fadl Habibi. Number 10, we learn about Allah's power and strength, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and how powerful He is, subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Hey, the last wa khitamuhu misk. I want somebody who hasn't. Habibi, yes. And at eleventh, Allah gives the Prophet what is known as a tasliya. Tasliya means what? Tasliya is to reassure the Prophet that yes, it does feel like you're alone. Yes, it does feel like you're on this path by yourself. And we feel that sometimes, right? When we're practicing our deen, ah, I'm the only one in my family who's doing this. Sometimes you feel that way. When you go to work and you do, you feel this. Yani, surah to Surah to Qaf is going to help you, inshallah Taala. What should you do? How should you deal with that situation? So, who's, who's looking forward to this tafsir of this surah? Um, who knew that this surah had this mean, much meaning in it? That it had all of this powerful understanding and knowledge. Who knew about it and taken it before? Who's taken surah tafsir surah to Qaf before? Mashallah. Okay, so mashallah, it's, it's good. You guys are fresh now. So first time we take Surah Tukaf together, inshallah ta'ala. So we already took what it means, Qaf, sah? We already took what Qaf uh, means. We said Qaf, Allah knows what he means by it, subhanahu ta'ala. The meaning, that's why when you go over it, you say Qaf, Allahu a'lamu bi muradihi. 
That's what you say in Arabic. Allahu a'lamu bi muradi. Allah knows what he means by it. Then we say, wal Quran al Majid. Wal Quran al Majid, Allah is swearing by what? The wow in wal Quran, that wow, is called wow al Qasam. The wow in Arabic language, there's many different types of wow. There's wow which means and. Okay? There is wow which is uh, uh, connecting two things together. This one, on the other hand, is called wow al Qasam. It's when you swear. In the Arabic language, we know we say, Wallahi. Somalis always say that, right? Billahi. Tallahi. Those three, right? Somalis were playing football and they all say to you, Wallahi, be, be, pass the ball to me. Wallahi, do this for me. So then I, I, mo- I met some uh, non Muslims um, uh, when I was in uni and they kept saying to me, Wallahi, they're not Muslims. So I said, Where did you guys, where did you guys learn all life? Like, we used to play football with, Somali, with some Somali kids. Yeah? So I said, you said, Wallahi, that means Allah's name. You can just say, Ashadu Allah ilaha. And enter Islam. You can say the whole testimony of La ilaha illallah. You can become Muslim. You don't just have to say one of his names. Huh? There's other 99 names that are missing. It's a form of da'wah, yeah, brother. Huh? So, so, the wow is wow al qasam. Remember this, brothers. The oath that we make has to be only to Allah. We cannot make a qasam to what? A makhluk. We can't swear by a creation. As for Allah, He can. Allah can do what He wants, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah does swear by His creation. Allah swears by the horse here. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by time. All of these are creations of Allah, and Allah swears by it. He can. As for us, Lakin, we're only allowed to swear by who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Quran, my brothers, is not created. The Quran is not created. It's the characteristics of Allah. Are we all together, brothers? So Allah swears by the Quran. He says, Wal Quran al Majid. I swear by the Quran. Allah is swearing by it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the Qasam. Al Majid, what does it mean? The word Al Majid, it means that which is vast. Al Azim, Al Wasi' Al Kareem. It's that which is vast and great. The Quran is what? It's vast in its description, it's vast in its meaning of what it carries. That's why it's Majid. Okay? And because it's got deep meaning in it, and because it has deep uh, eloquence in its structure, it has a high station. That's why you say this person has majd. Majd means what? Honor, status. And this person is deep. That's what, you, that's what uh, it means. So Allah swears by Subhanahu wa ta'ala wal the Quran and he referred what's the description Allah gave about the Quran? Qaf wal Quran al Majid. What does the word Majid mean? Habib at the back. Ha. Ah. Vast. Vast in what? Beautiful. Correct. Allahumma barik. So wal Quran al Majid means that the Quran is vast in its meaning. It's got deep meaning. That's why the Quran is not just words that you read. It's meaning that you need to take out of it. Quran al Majid. Then Allah says, Bal Ajibu. Allah is saying, who's, who's fascinated here? Those who disbelieve in Nabi Muhammad. Bal Ajibu. They are fascinated. Sah? What are they fascinated with? Bal Ajibu. They are fascinated to the Messenger, alayhi salatu istighrab, shocked. By the way, just so you know, the word Ajab comes in two meanings in the Quran and the Sunnah. How many meanings? Two. There's a form of ajab, which means rejection is with it. It's not just like, wow, okay. It's not like that. It's, wow, no, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Bal ajibu here means it is the ajab which in it is inkar, rejection. It's like the one in Surah Al-Ra'at. وَإِن تَعْجَبْ فَعَجَبٌ قَوْلُهُمْ صح? وَإِن تَعْجَبْ فَعَجَبٌ قَوْلُهُمْ so the ajab here means what? Rejection. They're rejecting a messenger now. Okay? And they're making it look like it's shocking. Like, really? He's telling us that he was amongst us for 40 years and one day randomly Allah selected him from all of us? But ajibu Allah says, anja'ahum, that it has come to them, mundirun a warner. And well, I this where the bites of can be focused a lot on. And nowadays we have this problem, brothers. 
people don't like, as they call it, negativity. Sah? Akhi, this is just, you're so negative, that's what they say. But the ayah says, Mundir. Mundir means to warn. I'm warning you of dangers. Some people say, don't, why are you mentioning the bad? Just mention the good, positivity. Sah? No, our religion is not like that. Our religion is a combination of glad tidings and good news and also Rusulan Mubashirina. Rusulan Mubashirina. They give glad tidings. Rusulan Mubashirina wa Mudhirina and they warn us. You can't just give glad tidings, glad tidings, glad tidings. You need to warn. You need to say, this is a danger, brothers, to be careful. This is also another danger, be careful. And to yourself as well. You have to be. You have to read the dangerous things so you can stay away from it. And you have to know the good so you can, it can encourage you. Are we all together, brothers? It's becoming a bit too much now with this positivity movement. Huh? Am, I, am I making sense or no? Who disagrees? So I can kick them out of the classroom. I'm joking. I'm joking. Are you? Well, there's a balance. You're right. A person cannot just do warning all day. The prophets weren't like that. The prophet wasn't like that. Sah? So they give the people hope, something to work with, but also tell them. And the surah does that. Jahannam, it tells us, so it scares us. It warns us of Jahannam. Be careful, this is the place for the bad people. And it gives us that glad tidings that inshallah ta'ala, if we work hard, if we exert the efforts, this is also the place that can be ours. Jannatul Firdaus. Nas'alullah azza wa jalla an yaj'alana min ahli al-jannah. I ask Allah that he makes us from the people of Jannah. So here Allah says, Bal ajibu, they are fascinated. Anja'ahum min anja'ahum, that he has come to them. Mundhirun aywuna minhum from amongst them. That's what they're fascinated with. This is also a refutation on the Christians. The Christians, what did they say? That Isa is not a human being. That he's a what? Ilah. They worship him. I mean, they, what they do say is that he's 100% human. He's 100% he's, he's, he's divine and he's also a human being. I don't know how that works. But they, Nas, Ibn al-Qayyim says, and also before him, Ibn Taymiyyah said in Kitab al-Nubuwad, the Nasara can come the day of judgment according to this statement of theirs, which is that Isa is a what? Ilah. Isa is an Ilah, right? He's divine to them, right? The Christians that, that were followers of Isa can use as a hujjah and say, Ya Rabb, Isa is an Ilah. That's why we couldn't follow him. The reason why Allah makes messengers from human beings is so that the people can follow him. Min ajri ta'asi. How can you follow one that doesn't eat, doesn't drink? doesn't have any faults, doesn't feel weakness, tiredness, is not, doesn't bleed. How can you follow him? Hence why Allah chose and selected prophets to be human beings. So that people can follow them. Does that make sense? So that's why Allah here is saying, بَلْ عَجِبُ أَنْ جَاءَهُمْ They are fascinated that he has come to them. And جَاءَهُمْ مُنْذِرُ مِنْهُمْ From amongst them. Prophets are مِنْ بَنِي جِنْسِهِمْ They're from their people. The Nabi Muhammad is not only sent to the Arabs, he's also sent to what? All of mankind. <coughs> then Allah says, فَقَالَ الْكَافِرُونَ The disbelievers. What did they say? The kafiruna here are those who rejected the tawheed. And that are ignorant and oppressive. What did they say? Can I have a mushaf myself? Someone share a mushaf with me. فَقَالَ الْكَافِرُونَ The disbelievers, they said. Who are the kafirun? Those who rejected what? They rejected the tawheed and the legislation that the Prophet ﷺ came with. Why did they reject it? Because of two reasons. Write this down. Very important. They rejected it. جَهْلًا مِّنْهُمْ وَظُلْمًا It was because of ignorance and because of oppression. Sahih, brothers. I want you guys to remember this. My brothers, my brothers, my brothers. Oppression and ignorance is a default position of all human beings. Inna aradna al-amanat ala al-samawati wal-ardi wal-jibali fa-abayna an yahmilnaha wa ashfaqana minha wa hamalaha al-insan innaw kana zaluman jahula The human is what? Oppressive and ignorant. Yes, we were all born ignorant. Yeah? And we were all born by default as oppressive. How do we remove the ignorance and how do we remove the oppression? 
With knowledge you remove the ignorance. How do you remove the oppression? You remove it with tazkiyah. Because ayah mentions, وَالَّذِي بَعْثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ is to remove the, the oppression. And to remove the ignorance, وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةِ If you let the ignorance and the oppression to remain, وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي الضَّلَالِ الْمُبِينَ You're going to be upon a ضلال المبين. That is what ضلال المبين means in the ayah Ibn al-Qayyim says. Did I make sense there? Or I can repeat it again if you haven't understood it. Shall I repeat it? Here Allah says, فَقَالَ الْكَافِرُونَ The disbelievers, the jahiduna, the stubborn, hard-headed ones, they, that rejected the... They rejected two things, by the way. Do you know what they rejected? They rejected tawheed, that they were meant to believe. And they also rejected the Sharia. And there's a difference between Tawheed and Sharia when we mention them together like that. Tawheed means what you believe inside. Sharia means the actions that you need to do, starting from the Salah, Zakah, Sawm, Hajj, buying, selling, marriage, divorces. What we now would call Fiqh would be considered Sharia. And Tawheed would be considered what you believe in your heart. They rejected both. That's the two they rejected. That's what they don't want to accept. They don't want to accept Tawheed, nor do they want to accept the Sharia. Okay, that's important that we understand that. Why are they rejecting it? They're rejecting it because they have two traits that they did not cure. Which is ignorance and oppression. These two evil traits, ignorance and oppression, stops a person from ever accepting Tawheed and Sharia. Are we all together brothers? The more a person gains knowledge, and the more the person does Tazkiyah to Nafs, the more that you will be appreciating the Tawheed and the, the Sharia. Does that make sense? And I mentioned to you, my brothers, we are all born ignorant and oppressive. Every single one of us. We're born that way. Allah created us like that. Like that. And He mentioned it in the last page of Surah Al-Hazab. Allah mentions it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says that we created, is what? A'idun ila aqrabil madhkur. It goes back to what was just recently mentioned. What was it? An insan. The human is ignorant and also oppressive. Every day in your life, you need to get rid of the ignorance and you also need to get rid of the oppression. How do you get rid of the ignorance? By going back to this verse I just mentioned. الْحِكْمَةِ By looking at the Quran and the hikmah here is the sunnah. Studying the Quran and the Sunnah, you remove ignorance. By doing tazkiyana, you get rid of oppression. When a person does not do tazkiyah to nafs, you will see that they are oppressive to others and they are oppressive to themselves. The dhulm is not just what you do to other people. There is also dhulmul nafs, oppressing yourself by putting your body through zina and al-kadhib and al-fujur and al-sariqah. Does that make sense, brothers? Am I making sense? No? <coughs> then, فَقَالَ الْكَافِرُونَ The disbelievers, they said, هَذَا this شَيْءٌ عَجِيب It's a fascinating matter. What is fascinating? That a warner would come from amongst us. And then he would tell us about resurrection and the day of judgment. Like, this is a fascinating thing, they said. They said what? This is a fascinating matter. Now they speak. They say, "Aida mitna." If we die, wa kunna turaban, and we become what dust, sand. If we do this question that they are asking, "Aida," that Hamza, that Hamza, a is called istifham's question. It's a question, right? But was it a form of wanting to know and accept it? You know, when somebody asks you a question, but you don't, you know, they're asking you this question because they want to reject what you're saying anyways. That's the type of question here it is. Aida that they are saying here is called al-istifhamul inkari. Al-istifhamul inkari is when you ask and within your question, it's a rejection as, you, as you're asking. So they're rejecting what they're going to ask about already. And this is something I want you guys to all remember, brothers. Some people, they don't ask so they can learn. They don't ask so they can follow. They ask because they've already got a preconceived notion. They're just wanting, they're looking for 
validating the points that they came that they have in their mind regarding you. And this is a misguidance that many groups within Islam fell into. Ibn Taymiyyah says, if you look at many of the groups, and if you look at many people who go astray, they go astray because يَعْتَقِدُونَ ثُمَّ يَسْتَدِلُونَ فَيَضِلُونَ They believe first, they have a preconceived notion. يَعْتَقِدُونَ ثُمَّ يَسْتَدِلُونَ Then they look for the evidence. Where is the evidence? They already have a belief. So they believe something first, then they go out looking for the evidence. What, what should they have done? Look for the evidence first, and based on the evidence that you get, you the belief comes from there. It stems from what? It stems from the evidence, not a preconceived notion. So what do they do? They believe something, they look for the uh, evidence for it, and then they go misguided. Because now if you've got a belief, and the ayah doesn't go in line with what you want, what do you do to the ayah? You start to push the ayah in a direction, you bend it, you turn it. If this ayah doesn't go with you, you go for another one, and you say, nah, this one, I don't want it. Give me another ayah. Nah, I don't want that one. Another one. Nah, I also don't want that one. And the person goes through so much evidences until he finds one that's ambiguous, unclear. And he says, yeah, this is, yeah, this proves my point. And then he becomes misguided. Sahab brothers, that's very dangerous. Don't take a stance unless the evidence comes to you first. Take, look at the evidence first. Then from the evidence, take the ruling out of, out of it. That's what the disbelievers are falling here. When they're asking the Prophet the question, they've already made their minds up. They're not asking to learn. They're saying, Aida mitna, if we die, wa kunna turaban, and we become dust and earth. Dalika raju'un ba'id. This, uh, this statement, which is Dalika raju'un ba'id, it doesn't mean them saying, it can happen, but it's a far fetched argument. That's not what they're saying. They're he actually saying that that's something that won't ever happen. So they asked, and then right after at the end, all they just said was, What? Well, this is never going to happen. This proves the point I mentioned, which is when you have a preconceived notion, that's the dangers of it. Okay? Allah says, Allah is telling them about His knowledge now. Allah says, Qad alimna, we know. Ma tanqusul ardu minhum. We know the earth when it swallows them, the places that their flesh is and, their, and the pus and the blood, what part of the earth it goes into. Allah says, I know it. Forget bringing you back. I know exactly what when your, your body, it's, the earth swallowed it. And it, Allah says, I know every part of the earth that take, took that in. Is that not knowledge? Allah says, we know that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. On top of that, وَعِنْدَنَا with us, Allah is saying, is kitabun, a book, hafizun, that documents all of that. So we're not going to just hold you account to our knowledge. We're going to show you everything. We're going to say, look at it, it's written. So, it's all documented. It's written. It's, but the ayah started with what? Qad. Qad here is لِلْتَحْقِيق. Remember the word Qad in grammar? You learn it, right? للتقريل والتكثير and all of that هي is للتحقيق reality is indeed Allah is saying سبحانه وتعالى we have knowledge that there is no way you can run away from us you are under our supervision even when you die and you perish we still know how uh, you are but there's only one group of uh, people who the earth does not eat the rest of us the earth eats us but the Prophet told us, Inna Allah harram al arda an ta'kula ajsam al anbiya. Allah prohibited the earth from eating the flesh of the prophets. Prophets, the, um, uh, the earth doesn't swallow them. If Nabi Muhammad's grave was undug right now, he'd be the same as he died. His body would be exactly the same. Are we all together, brothers? Whereas every one of us, huh? <coughs> the earth will swallow us. And the only thing that would remain from our body, as the Prophet mentioned, is Ajab with Dhanab. Ajab with Dhanab is that which would remain from the human being. And the Prophet told us, وَمِنْهُ يُرَكَّبْ And that's where the person is then made back from. It's, it's called a what? Cocta? What's... I don't want to pronounce it wrong. What's it? I, I prefer not saying tailbone. Yeah? The coccyx, right? Yeah, that's what it, something like that. Yeah, it basically is the ajab with dhanab, which the person is then made from. So Allah is telling us, "Wa'indana." Allah said, "Is with us." 
يعني the لوح المحفوظ write that down it's important that you write understand that وعندنا كتاب this book is talking about Allah is not the Quran Allah is talking about اللوح اللوح المحفوظ the لوح المحفوظ is where everything is written there that knowledge what do you, what do they say translated in English this the sacred template what the preserved <laughs> نعم that's what it is Allah then says بل كذبوا they disbelieved بالحق the truth لما جاءهم when it came to them when the truth came to them, they disbelieved it. Which also reminds us, brothers, there's no one more eloquent than Nabi Muhammad. And some people disbelieved in him, right? A lot of people disbelieved in him, sah? So why do you then think that if your message is not accepted, there's something wrong with the message? There's nothing wrong with the message. The hellfire was created for a reason. Some people have to go in there, sah? Some people. They have to be in the hellfire. So you don't have to think to yourself at all, my brothers and sisters, that whenever your message is not accepted, there's something wrong with your message. There's nothing wrong with your message. Stick to your message. If it's true, and it's based from, on the Quran and the Sunnah. So Allah is telling us here, as Muslims, بَلْ كَذَّبُوا بِالْحَقِّ They disbelieved in the truth. So Allah is still referring to it as haqq. Whether you like it or not, whether you guys accept it or not, it is the haqq, it's the truth. So they disbelieved in the truth. لَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ When it came to them, فَهُمْ فِي أَمْرِ مَرِيجِ And they are in a state of confusion. Wow! Remember this. Ibn al-Qayy, Ibn al-Kathir in his tafsir, he says, everybody who goes against the truth is in a state of confusion. You always feel, he's saying this one time, he's saying this one time, he's saying this one time, and he's saying this one time. مَا مَعَنَا فِي أَمْرِ الْمَرِيجِ فِي أَمْرِ الْمُضَّرِبِ One that some of them are saying, Nabi Muhammad, the reason why we're not believing him is he's a magician. Another group of them is saying, he's a liar. Another one, he's a fortune teller. Another group, make your minds up. Why are you guys all differing on what, what, what his ruling is? فَهُمْ فِي أَمْرِ Are we all together, brothers? They can't make their minds up. So it means they are contradicting one another in what they are saying about, in what they are saying about the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. Let's take, how many verses did we take? Okay, write down the, the, the overall points that we took from these five verses, inshallah. The overall. Number one, the overall points that we've taken so far from these five is we spoke about, again, the eloquence of the Quran and how the Quran is at the highest level of eloquence. We mentioned that when we were talking about Qaf. The second point that we took <coughs> in those five verses is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by the Quran. And He did that because. The Quran is vast in its meaning. Okay? The third, inshaAllah ta'ala, is the permissibility of swearing by the Quran. That we are allowed to swear by the Quran because the Quran is the speech of who? Allah's speech is not a created thing. So we're allowed to swear by it. We're not allowed to swear by the created things. Allah's speech is not created. The Quran is not created. Okay? So the Quran we believe is the words of Allah and the words of Allah are not created. Hence we are allowed to swear by the Quran. So someone can say, Wal Quran, I swear by the Quran. You can say that. Okay? <laughs> Number five. Uh, number, number four. Oh, sorry. Number four. The disbelievers, <coughs> they were fascinated and we mentioned that the fascination was what? A form of rejection. On a matter that doesn't really require that ajab or that inkar. It's a re it makes sense. Brothers, does it not make sense? If you say Allah created us, okay. And then he, the person will say to us, what does he want from us? Why did he create us for? What, what do you consider a person who does something makes something and then just walks away from it. The first thing you think is, what do you want from the thing that you're doing? Everything that's done is done for a reason. Are we together, brothers? So you, the person would say, logically it makes sense. Allah Ta'ala created us, okay? When He created, He wants something from us, okay? How does He convey to us what He wants and what He doesn't want? And that's when the messengers come in. So logically it makes no, it makes a lot of sense, sorry, it makes a lot of sense why there is the why there is a prophet and that why that prophet is a human being all of that makes sense so there's no reason for them to be that they're fascinated 
with a prophet and a messenger that came from amongst them. There's no need to be fascinated with that. So that's the fourth point. We, we touched on that. Another point that we touched on is that, well, I didn't really touch on it like that, but Nabila Muhammad is a, it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's a blessing that Allah sent to us. But he's no doubt a blessing to the Arabs that he first came out from, that had the opportunity to believe in him, that had the opportunity to benefit from him. That was a blessing which they didn't benefit from. But he's also a benefit for us, for us as well. The next, uh, the next point that we, take, we took is how they rejected the resurrection and that they saw it to be something far-fetched or the impossible, that's not going to happen. We took that. The eighth point that we took, or seventh point that we took, is um, how Allah knows what the earth swallows. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. After the earth swallows our flesh and our We touched on that. The eighth is there are some people who the earth will not eat. صح? And that is the flesh of who? The prophets and the anbiya. Number nine. <clears throat> There is a lawhul mahfuz. We talked about it, right? The lawhul mahfuz is where everything is written and documented. All our actions, how, when we were create, when we're gonna die, when we were created, all of our information is in that place. And it doesn't get changed, nor does it get, yani, tampered with. That's what the ayah means. Where in dana kitabun hafiz is protected. And the tenth, final point was what? How the disbelievers came with preconceived notion. They believed before looking for the truth. They rejected the truth when it came to them. صح? Because they already had a preconceived notion. Hey, before I move on to the next verses, does anyone have any questions? Hey, Fadl. Where by the? <coughs> so the first question, which is very good, the word hafiz here is referring to the lahul mahfud, not the Quran. Okay? Um, because Allah says, Wa indana, and the Quran is with us, but the lahul mahfud is with who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions that the lahul mahfud. What is written in there is on the command of Allah wa Taala, but the angels are the ones who write it. So he says it is makhluk. Hayya fadl. Let's carry on. <coughs> Allah says, "Afalam yanzuru ila samai." Allah is now going to refute them after He mentioned their claim. Allah is now going to respond to them. Subhanahu wa Taala. Those who rejected the resurrection, who said, "How is it possible that the earth, okay?" How is it possible that the earth is going to swallow us and then we're going to come back to life again? Allah says, Why do they not look? Why do they not what? Why do they not look? Again, this question is, There's a Hamza here, right? Okay, this one is now called, before we took, Istifham Inkari, right? This one now is called, Al-Istifham At-Tawbikhi. Ma ma'an At-Tawbikhi? Istifham lit tawbikh What does that mean? It means, there's a question, but there's, they're being told off in the question. Like they're being scolded. They're being told off for, 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 for their statement. So it's a question, but in that question, you're being told off. Okay? It's one of those ones when your parents say to you, you're going to go with your friend. And you're like, no, no, mom, I'm still, I'll stay home, inshallah. I'll stay home. I won't go with my friends. It's a question. But you know in that question it's like you'll be you've already been told off so here allah is saying Afalam yanduru. it's not why do they not look why do they not look at what Ila samai. look at the sama look open your eyes look at the sama allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is saying to them subhanahu wa ta'ala this word sama it means generally speaking kullu ma ala Everything that's above you is considered a sama. Anything that's above you is a sama. Sah? Are we all together? 
But here, what does it mean? It means the actual sama. Go look at that sama that Allah created, not the one, not, not, the, not the roof. Are we all together? Look at the sama. Allah is saying subhanahu wa ta'ala, فوقهم, that is above you guys all. كيف بنيناها, the way Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He created it subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at it. وزيناها, the way He adorned it subhanahu wa ta'ala and beautified it. Allah, did, what did He do? He created the samawat. So that's what, first of all, we, we see from the verse. And what do we also take? The way Allah built it subhanahu wa ta'ala. How did Allah build it subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah mentions it in the Quran. He says, وَالسَّمَاءَ بَنَيْنَاهَا بِأَيْدٍ Here, بِأَيْدٍ means what? بِقُوَّةٍ Allah is telling us that He created the what? He created the sama with strength. In another place, Allah mentions Surah Al-Naba. Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَبَنَيْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ سَبَعًا شِدَادًا Shidad means strong. When you're on the plane and you're flying through the one country to another and you're on an airline, look at the sama. There's no pillars holding it. Allah is powerfully holding the sama. So why don't you look at the sama? And this, my brothers and sisters, is one of the things the Quran elaborates a lot on. He tells us, Sanurihim ayatina fil afaqi. We will show you our signs by looking at the un- by the universal signs. Over the, I, I, over the years, I've traveled to a few countries. I never used to travel a lot. I didn't like traveling. Even to the north of England, I, ne- I didn't like traveling a lot. I like to stay local. I like to follow my routine. I'm scared of leaving my comfort zone and that little routine I have in life. But I traveled. And subhanAllah, brothers, wallahi, when you travel, you see the world. And I'm talking about the landscape and the way that Allah created everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You go to one country and it's sand. Are we all together, brothers? It's just pure sand. It's like you come to another country, it's just greenery. Sah? I've uh, come to the UK again now, and I'm shocked when I'm going to up north of England and it's all green on the side. I'm, I'm saying, when I was here, did I not recognize all of this? Sah, brothers? You see all the greenery, you're like, ajeeb, ajeeb. Do you guys recognize it or are you like, nah? You saw the greenery? Yeah. It's something else, right? Yeah. And Allah mentions it in the Quran, by the way. Allah says it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does He say? He says, Safra'u tasurru nadirin. One of the things Ibn al Faraj, Ibn al Jawzi, rahimahullah, mentions to cure depression and anxiety is to, is to what? These yellow colors and greenery colors. Hey, na'am, Allah. Why do you think you, in, a, in this country and many countries like this, they're depressed? Because it's always gloomy, right? It's always raining and it's dark and it's dull. Sah? And then when you, it's bright and it's, you open the windows and it just shines through. You guys, the way it is, majority of the time through, throughout the year, it's like very dark and dull. So people become depressed from this. Sah? Ibn, uh, Ibn Aqir, rahimahullah, his whole book, Al Funun, wasn't published. It was an 800 volume book, by the way. It got lost. Or we don't have it. Okay? In this book, it's, it's, all he writes there is just benefits. Kitab al Funun is the, if it was, if it was um, available, it'd be the biggest Islamic book ever written. In there, some of it has been found, or some of it is quoted through secondary sources. And in there, he mentions the ways to uh, deal with depression. I wish we had the full book for us to deal with it. Mental health issues. Sah? It would have been a benefit, right? Anyways. When you travel, brothers, and you look at the sama, and you look at the ard, and you look at everything, my brothers, travel. I'm advising you. siru fil ardi. Travel on this earth. Sah? And look at things. It's sad that the Muslims don't do that. The kuffar do that. Are we all together, brothers? The kuffar, what do they do? Yeah? What was it? That man who, who said we're from monkeys originally, Richard, you know, Charles Darwin, sah? What did he do to come to this conclusion that we're from monkeys? Ajeeb. Yeah? So look, he did. First of all, he, something we should have been doing, Muslims. But this kafir did it, hey? He just sat down and just started watching birds. Hey, Ajeeb, hey? What else did he do? 
That's what we were told to do, brothers, 1,400 something years ago. صح? Allah says, فَانْظُرُوا كَيْفَ بَدَأَ الْخَلْقِ Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started the creation. He was trying to, if, how did the world start? By looking at a bird for so long and pondering over it. صح? So no, that's, that's, uh, that's ours, brothers. That's what we should be doing. Are we all together, brothers? Looking at the makhluqat, Allah said, أَفَلَمْ يَنْظُرُوا Do they not look? For example, you travel the world, you find, this is a sad reality, you find that Muslims go to lands. As you know, a lot of Islamic manuscripts have been taken by when the colonies came into the Muslim countries, they took a lot of the Muslim um, manuscripts. That's why you find a lot of those books are in the Germany, Munich, Munich, whatever it's called. They have some of Kitab Kifayatul Akhyar by Ibn Husn, which is a sharh of uh, Kitab, uh, Ibn, uh, the, what's it called, Mata Abi Shuja, the sharh for it. The best copy was found in Berlin. Princeton University has so much. In Netherlands, Holland, when I recently went, it was closed, I wanted to go. They've got a whole entire university designated for all the Islamic manuscripts. They're all there. The British, li British uh, library here has so much Islamic manuscripts. Guess what? When the Muslims come and the Arabs travel to this country, where do they go? Where do they visit? Do they go to those manuscript places and go check it out? Where are they at? Yeah? No, hadith wala haraj. Are we all together? Where a people like that is gharib. We don't look at knowledge and give it high weight. And also we don't look at the natural creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sahab brothers. We come for other things. You travel to a country and you're not looking at the things you should be looking for. So this is ayah is very powerful. أَفَلَمْ يَنْظُرُوا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ Do they not look at the sama فَوْقَهُمْ That is above them. كَيْفَ بَنَيْنَاهَا The way that Allah Taala He erected it. وَزَيَّنَّاهَا And the way we adorned it. Allah then says وَمَا لَهَا مِنْ فُرُوجِ مَا مَعْنَا وَمَا لَهَا مِنْ فُرُوجِ It means there's no shuquq and there's no sudur. يعني there's no splits in it. It's connected fully. From beginning to to end, Allah created it like that. Subhanahu wa taala. Wal arda and the earth, madadnaha. Allah says we spread it. Are we all together, brothers? Now we have to admit that <coughs> whether it's true or not, Allahu a'lam. I'm not affirming it, I'm not denying it. I'm just saying, but the earth can be flat and it can also be what? An oval. There's no denying of both. It could be, احتمال. But my iman doesn't increase nor does it decrease whichever of those it is. Are we all together, brothers? But Allah does mention here, Wal Arda Madadinaha. Allah said we spread subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani it made it mafroosh, like, like a bed or your place you sleep on. Allah spread it out subhanahu wa ta'ala. Vast. So the earth can be flat because it's so big, but it also can be um, the way that they say it is. I don't affirm nor do I negate. Science changes tomorrow, they say another, another thing. And then after that, they say another thing. And you just gave the tafsir of the ayah based on that. And when they change, you change with them. I mean, why waste your time on all of that? Sah? There was a few years back, there was a manuscript that was found, in, I think, of the Quran in the, I think, Birmingham uh, Museum, right? And Muslims were like, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, look. The, the, there was a manuscript, the Quran is preserved. They pegged the preservation of the Quran on this manuscript. Sah? What about if they say, oh, we found another portion of it a few weeks later. And they say to you, we found another part of it and it doesn't have verses of it that is in your Quran. What are you guys going to say? You just yesterday pegged it on this. You understand, my brothers? So don't stick to that, any of that. Say, look, whether you guys found this or not, it doesn't prove anything for us. For us Muslims, inna nahnu nizzalna dhikra wa inna lahu. Are we all together, brothers? That's why it's important that the Quran, when you explain it, don't explain it on these contemporary matters that are fluctuating, changing, and etc. And then later, the tafsir. <laughs> There's an ayah in the Quran. I don't know, 9 11 when it happened. Some of you guys don't remember it. And some of you guys do. I, uh, a brother came up to me and he told me that 9 11 was mentioned in the Quran. 
It's actually in the Quran. I said, Kayf. Ajeeb, right? Allah mentioned in the Quran that this is going to happen. I said, How? Kayf. He said, Nine is Surah to Tawbah. Eleven is the eleventh juice, which is Surah to Tawbah. Is it okay? And when you're young, you're naive. You take anything anybody says. I'm like, Allahu Akbar, Allah's Quran is. So he said nine and eleven. Surah to Tawbah. Latajidanna ashadda nas is the eleventh. And the ninth surah is Surah to Tawbah. How many floors was the, uh, the, 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 the tower, twin towers? He gave me, he mentioned to me it's 110. He goes, let's go to Surah to Tawbah, I 110. We open the verse and it says, and Allah says, What's the ayah? What's the ayah? So he said, their buildings will not stand. Bunyan means buildings, he said. It will not stand and it will collapse. A young, I'm a young person. I looked, I said, Allah, the Quran is haq. There you go, Allah mentioned it. So next day I go to school. My teacher mentions the, the, the dangers of what happened and 9 11, what took place, and how serious it was. And then I said to teacher, it's in the Quran, it's actually mentioned in the Quran. <laughs> Our prophet prophesied this 1400. He put me in a problem. So, my brothers and sisters, do not do tafsir of the Quran like that. Sah? And there are people who actually do that, sah, brothers. And they think that they're making, they're proving the Quran to be a miracle sent from Allah. You're actually not, you're discriminating and you're destroying the concept of what the Quran actually came down for. Allah says, Allah says, we threw onto this earth and we placed on this earth. Rawasiya means mountains. And Rawasiya is what? Al Jibal. Allah placed mountains on this earth. Allah says, we brought out. Fiha min kulli zawjin bahij. On this earth, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, what did He bring out? What's the mountain for? The mountain is to protect the earth from earthquake. The mountains supports the earth, it, it holds the earth. Doesn't mean earthquake can't happen, but it helps it to an extent. The places that tend to have a lot of mountains, a lot of mountains, okay, earthquake is less. Because the earthquake. Uh, the, uh, the mountains, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he mention? And tamida bikum, so the earth does not move with you all. But that doesn't mean it, it, it's always the case. But that's why Allah wa ta'ala, he placed mountains. Wal-arda, the earth, madadinaha, Allah said, we spread it. wa alqayna fiha rawasiya, and we placed on top of the earth mountains. Wa anbatina, Allah says, we brought out of this earth fiha min kulli zawjin. The earth, Allah Taala brought different types of vegetations. By the look at how shocking it is this one part of the earth is producing an apple tree, a mango tree, a banana tree. Sah? I don't know if there's a banana tree. I just know that bananas come out from the earth. What's the What's the difference between a vegetable and a fruit? Huh? So which one is a, veg is a vegetable? Say, hey, we want, to, we want a definition which is jami'un mani, a comprehensive answer. So hey, what is a uh, vegetable? It's okay, so part of it has to be in the ground. Hey, so it's the ground. Hey, what about fruit? Who, who agrees with it? Yeah. Yeah. اختلف العلماء. You see, there's a difference of opinion. <laughs> hey, Sheikh, what's your opinion? Oh, there's a plant now. So there's a plant, a vegetable. vegetable. Okay. Hey, hey. Fruits grow, grow on a tree, and a vegetable grows in the ground. That's a fruit. 
So a tomato is a fruit or vegetable. Yeah? Who considers a tomato a fruit? Who considers a tomato a, 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 a apple? Who considers a, a, a vegetable? Yeah? But why is there that dispute on, on, on a tomato? Yeah? The definition is not very solid, huh? It's a hard thing to say. So we can't, it's hard to say this is a vegetable and this is a fruit. Or is it easy? Mm -hmm. Ha, Zubair, what do you want to say? Some people eat tomato. Some people just cut for tomato and they put it in their salad. Hey, is that, is that a good definition? He said you won't open the fridge and get a tomato to eat it. But a fruit you would. Let's say we found somebody who does that. So, ala kullin. Allah is saying subhanahu wa ta'ala, we created different types of vegetations and fruits. But they're all coming from the ground. Ajib. Allah then says, tabsiratan. The reason why Allah wa ta'ala, he does, is to remove ignorance from you all. And make you guys ponder and contemplate. Tabsira here means, yani give you guys insight. Allah is saying, all of this I bring out of the earth. Look, Allah he shocks me and I want you guys to all see this. I, this is the land, different seeds have been put in, but it's producing t totally different apple, orange, and, and they're all coming from the same ground. Are we all together, brothers? They're all coming. The similar thing is the children when they come from their mothers. There's this calm, collective kid, Allahumma barik, and there's the other one who's just energetic and full of energy. And there's one that's light, and there's one that's dark, and there's one that's short, there's one that's tall. All of them come from one place. Sah? I'm sure your siblings, one is calm, one is very energetic, one is a troublemaker, always bringing problems to the house. There's another one who doesn't, he's always calm, and he's following the rules and the regulations. But they all come from one mom. Sah? When you think about it, so it's, a, it's a fascinating thing, right? Why are we not all the same? Our fingers right now, they all come from the, they're coming out of the same palm. One is longer, one is shorter, one is fat, one is... Ah, our fingers are different. So all these are... When you ponder on these things, you start realizing how everything is and how Allah created it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, تَبَصِرَةً وَذِكْرًا لِكُلِّ عَبْدٍ مُنِيبٍ But this is an insight for who like him. Who's going to look at these things and then point it towards Allah and say, you know what, Allah, you did all of this. Allah... Allahu Akbar. Who would say that? It's the people who have this quality. It's the people Allah said who are لِكُلِّ abdin munib. The person who always is humble and fearful. خَاضِعٌ خَائِفٌ And always, you remember, munib means to turn back to Allah. The reason why they keep returning back to Allah is because they are humble, they are arrogant people. And they are also what? They're scared and terrified and scared. With those two qualities, they keep running back to Allah. Because when they do something wrong, they go back to their Lord, Allah. They're connected to Him so much. That's why you find the militant atheists right now out there. They're not humble. They're very arrogant when they talk. Have you seen them? When they speak and they put their points across. Very, very arrogant and condescending. That's what they do. <clears throat> Allah says, Tabasiratan. All of this is a, is, يعني, a lesson and, and it's also knowledge. And a reminder for every slave who is what? لِكُلِّ عَبِدٍ مُنِيبٍ Then Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, وَنَزَّلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ We send down from the sky and water مُبَارَكَ And this water that we send down is full of barakah. Why did Allah mention مَاءً مُبَارَكَ Because there can come rain that's not got barakah. It's coming to destroy everybody. So. Just because it rained, it doesn't always mean it's a good thing. Sometimes the rain could be like, a bit dangerous. And we all know the famous hadith where the Prophet ﷺ, a man came, he said, Ya Rasulullah, the Prophet was in the Khutbatul Jum'ah. And he said, Udu'u Allah lana, make dua for us, 
but Allah sends rain. The, the, we need rain. Where, uh, yani vegetation and everything and our animals, they want water. So the Prophet raised his hand. As he was making the dua, the clouds came together. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And it rained on the spot. The water was dripping from the Prophet's beard alayhi salatu wasallam. It carried on from this Friday to the next Friday. The rain carried on. The next Friday, the man came in, the same man, he stood up, he said, Ya Rasulullah, make Allah, say Allah, ya, to Allah to stop it. Because it destroyed everything. The roads and it's flooding everything. Then the Prophet said, look, he didn't say stop the rain. He said, Allahumma hawalayna. Oh Allah, place those rains and allocate it around us rather than at us. Oh Allah, place it in the valleys, in the places that we need it later so we can go and pick it up from it. Are we all together? Ma'an Mubarakan, a blessed, a blessed water. Does that make sense, brothers? Ma'an Mubarakan. Well, the Prophet ﷺ, it started to become, يعني, it looked like it was going to rain. And then he entered and he came out and he entered and the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, it's just rain. And he said, Did you not know Allah created, Allah destroyed the previous nation with the rain? Yeah? فَلَمَّا رَأَوْهُ عَارِضًا مُسْتَقَبِلَ أَوْدِيَتِهِمْ قَالُوا هَذَا عَارِضٌ مُنْطِرُنَا بَلْ هُوَ مَسْتَعْجَلْتُمْ بِهِ رِيحٌ فِيهَا عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ صح؟ تُدَمِّرُ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ بِأَمْلِ رَبِّهَا So it can destroy you. So that's why it is rain that is blessed. So when you ask Allah for rain, we ask Allah rain for what? Blessed rain. Allah says, وَنَزَّلْنَا we send down من السماء from the sky. The fact that Allah says, وَنَزَّلْنَا we send down. مِنَ السَّمَاءِ يعني من جهة السماء. The rain doesn't come from the earth. Where does it come from? So, so question. Is the water originally from high above or is it originally from the earth? Is the sea the asal or is the rain asal? Did Allah create the sea like that? Or was the sea there and the rain flooded the sea? Which was the asal? Huh? Now you put your hand up if you believe it's the rain. What about if you believe the sea is the asal? And what about if you believe Allah Alam? <laughs> Abdullah ibn Abbas held the opinion that the rain is asal from the sky. And I don't know anyone who opposed him. So, because he hasn't got anyone opposing him, it seems that the Sahabas all agree with him on that. Okay? Seems like that. So, the rain is asal from the sky. Allah said, Allah said, Sahih. Yeah? So if we go into the ma'ani of the balagha and all of this, we're going to take all day, inshallah ta'ala. There's a lot of, I avoided saying a lot about this. And even hatta from the word sama, I wanted to go into more details. But today I'm, I'm banned from, I've been told, don't leave without finishing the surah, inshallah ta'ala. So I'll pause that because if I start that, that I'll go on for a while. وَنَزَّلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ Allah said we send down from the sky مَا أَمْ مُبَارَكًا A water is full of barakah فَأَنْبَتْنَا بِهِ With that rain Allah says we made it a reason for vegetations to come out جَنَّاتٍ gardens Allah then tells us subhanahu wa ta'ala and وَحَبَّ الْحَصِيدِ Allah tabarakahu ta'ala He tells us وَحَبَّ الْحَصِيدِ حَبَّ الْحَصِيدِ means the seeds يعني حَبَّ الزَّرَى حَبْ means what? Seeds يعني you plant the seed on the earth and then the rain will bring it out from that seed that you have planted. Sometimes even Allah moves the seed from one part of the other with what? With wind. And Allah allocates it in where He wants it to be. And so the seed might fly, out, fly off from the ground, the earth, and it might go to another part of the land and then it gets buried because of the wind. And that's where Allah Taala creates a, a vegetation and a fruit for the, for the people. Also, Allah Taala, what did He also create? One, this is the things that we all need to be looking at. One nakhla basiqatin. Allah mentions trees that are what? Very tall. Okay, and it has what? It has laha talun nadid. These trees that are very tall, they have fruits. There are what? There are fruits on it. 
which the people eat as form of food. Are we all together, brothers? Allah is saying we did all of that. Rizqa lil ibad. All of that is to provide for you. Are we all together, brothers? All of this Allah is making the rain, the vegetations, the fruits, all of these, the dates. Allah says we made all of this a form of provision for you, my brothers. So, when this, uh, uh, in, uh, the issue of Russia and Ukraine took place, and Ukraine was, they say, the highest provider of what is called wheat, right? What did it do to the, to the world? It affected the economy, did it not? And this is things that make you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rizq that He provides for us subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah mentions it here, rizq lil ibad. All of this is a form of um, provision for you. Also, Allah says, wa ahiyayna bihi mayta. The earth, <coughs> after it dies, Allah gives it life. كَذَلِكَ الْخُرُوجِ Allahu Akbar Allah brings it back to the resurrection The earth is dead, barren land You look at it, you say This earth is this nothing Really? No, I don't think anything come out from this earth You come back five years It's trees and everything has been made in it The earth produces Allah mentions وَأَحْيَيْنَا بِهِ بَلْدَةً مَيْتًا a land that is dead, Allah gives it life subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kadalika and like that is the resurrection. The way that the vegetations come out of the earth, that's how you're gonna come out of your grave, brother. And that's how you're gonna come out of your grave, sister. So Allah wa ta'ala here, that's what he tells us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's take the benefits, inshaAllah ta'ala, from those verses that we took. First benefit that we took, the first benefit that we took from <clears throat> the other, these verses was number one, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He scolded the disbelievers, those who disbelieved in the truth and re rejected the resurrection. And the way that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala scolded them was by saying to them, why do you not look at? The universal signs of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala أَفَلَمْ يَنْظُرُوا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ Do they not look at the sama? Has everyone written the first one? The second benefit that we took from these verses is that it's obligatory to look at and to ponder and to, to, to contemplate on the universal signs of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala <clears throat> the third thing that we took is that and Allah mentioned is ithbatu ubudiyatil mu'minina al khassah lillah that we affirm the servitude of the believers to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala because the ayah what did it mention wa nazalna min Allah says tabsiratan wa dhikra li kulli 'abdin slaves Munib, the only people that are going to turn back to Allah when they look at these universal signs and say, this is what my Lord created. And it's going to make them appreciate Allah more are the true slaves of Allah, the believers. That's what the ayah mentions. That there are slaves who are, appreciate their Lord's creation uh, and what he made subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number four, Allah mentions to us the blessing that he bestowed upon us by sending rain, Giving us these vegetations and these fruits, these different types of fruits and vegetations, a form of provision for us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a blessing, it's a ni'mah, Allah has mentioned it to us. When Azalna mina sama ima and mubarakan, fa ambatina bihi jannati muhabbal hasid, when nakhla basikati laha talu nadid, rizqa lil ibad. It's a ni'mah that we have all of these type of food to eat. And the fifth benefit that we take from these verses is using the universal signs to prove the resurrection. How Allah 
uses this very com- very commonly يعني استدلال بخلق السماوات والأرض وإنبات النبات وإحياء الأرض how Allah uses the universal signs sending rain bringing out the fruits and the vegetations from the earth how Allah uses that subhanahu wa ta'ala to what? to prove the resurrection has everyone written that? everyone's written that, right? Then Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says, we'll take this page and we'll take a little break after that, inshaAllah ta'ala, before we go to the next page. Allah tells us subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, كَذَّبَتْ قَبَلَهُمْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ Here Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is now going to tell us about the previous nations who disbelieved in their prophets. Allah is trying to tell the prophet, this resistance that you're getting from Quraysh, okay, Quraysh is rejecting you, they're not taking your message. They're ridiculing you. They're calling you names. And it's, of course, it's discouraging. You have to understand the Prophet was alone and he was little in number. First he was by himself and then after that he had companions, but they're still a small in number. He has to go against the entirety of Quraysh. So, of course, there's times of يعني, discomfort and weakness and you feel. So, Allah is telling the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, the previous nations. And that's why I say, brothers, if you're feeling down and you feel like you're, you're not happy or you're sad, remember to read the stories of those great peoples that, people that came before you. It will give you that tas- tasliyah. Read the story of Nabi Ayyub and what he went through, how he suffered and the patience and the resilience that he showed. Sahab brothers and sisters and the endurance that will make you feel, yeah, I can do this. Read the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu biography and his seerah. It will calm you down and make you relax. And that everything, inshallah ta'ala, is, is, inshallah ta'ala is good. The poet, he said, By reading the great scholars, their lives, it gives life, it gives, it gives, uh, it gives life to the heart. And when you leave that, brothers, you'll feel lonely and alone in all of the things that you're trying to do. Does that make sense? So that's what Allah does for, the, does for the Prophet a lot of the times. He's now telling him, look, let me tell you a story of those great prophets that came before you. كَذَّبَتْ قَبَلَهُمْ Before you came and before them, Quraysh, they came what? قَوْمُ نُوحٍ The people of Nuh. They came. That's a, a nation. Allah has talked about. وَأَصْحَابُ الرَّسِي the word al-ras, it means al-ma al-kathir. It's a lot of water. May, meaning the people of the well, the small well. They had a well where small water was in there, trickles of waters where it was in there. That's what a lot of scholars mention. We don't know what prophet was sent to them, but the Quran mentions them a lot, ashab al-ras. They rejected their prophets. Thamud, the people of Thamud, they rejected what? They rejected. They rejected their prophet. Oh yeah, who? Don't shout. Which prophet was sent to the people of Thamud? Habibi, ha. Nabi Allah Salih. Good. So the people of Thamud, they rejected Salih that was sent to them. Wa'adun, and the people of Ad, they rejected what? The Prophet that was sent to them. Hey, who was sent to the people of Ad? The people of Ad, I want somebody else. Hey, Habibi, yes. Who was sent to the people of Ad? Hud, Nabila Hud, correct. Hud was sent to the people of Ad, they also disbelieved. وَفِرَعَوْنُ And Fir'aun. Who was sent to Fir'aun? Which prophet was sent to Fir'aun? Uh, you at the back. Uh, yeah. Fir'aun. Musa alayhi salam. Correct. Everyone knows that one, right? Is that it? Musa alone was sent to them? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Harun was also sent with Musa to Fir'aun. There's a, there's a, a little 
uh, benefit that the scholars mentioned. They say, what's the greatest gift a brother gave to his brother? Uh, yeah. You, Akhi, in the corner. Yes. What's the greatest gift a brother gave to his brother? It's, it's, it's tricky. So, so it's... Uh, yeah? Prophethood. And how, did that, how does that work? Yeah. Musa made dua for his brother Harun to become a prophet. That was the greatest dua and supplication... He pushed his levels up and put him up on a level of being a what? A prophet. There's nothing a person can give to another person greater than that. So our brothers, Harun is now in the ranks of what? The Anbiya. Are we all together? That's just the benefit you, you all remember. But why did uh, Musa want uh, Harun to come? What was the reason? Couldn't Musa do it by himself? Hey, Habibi. You, yeah, in the, no, no, right next to you on your left. Yes, Habibi. Yeah? I, ca I can't hear my... Was it because of his... Hey, Musa. Close, close, close. You're very close. Yes. It the North Face. Yes, you, Habibi. Yeah. Musa had a uh, speech impediment. And so what did he do? What did he want? So he wanted his brother Harun to help him in what? Hey, Adil. Sahih. So it's the issue of speech. Now there's a benefit here I want you guys to remember. Musa had an a issue with his, with it, when it came to his speech. صح? And Harun was what? He was what? He was more eloquent than him. Had to even Pharaoh use this against him. Hey, who knows the ayah? Hey? Pharaoh used the, against Musa alayhi salam, the, his ability of speech. He, he said, come on, you want me to take a message from you and you speak like this? And I'm, I'm coming to this point. I want you guys to remember this point. Hey? Huh? How? What's the ayah? Uh, you're very close. Uh, yeah. Who else knows it? Uh, yeah. This is dangerous. I was told this masjid, the people know the Quran. Kilburn Islamic Center, I was told the brothers here, they, they study the Quran. He said that, Walaya Kadi, you been, but I want to know the big part, the beginning. Oh, Allahu Akbar. Am min Am I not better? He said. Then who? This one. Who? Who is he referring to? He's referring to Musa alayhi salam, who's not even able to speak properly. Now, brothers, remember, when Allah was sending Nabi Lai Musa, did Allah not know this? This is my question. I want you guys to listen. Did Allah not know that Musa is like this? Of course, he did, right? And Allah sent him. Sah? Just because you want to teach the people and benefit the people or bring knowledge to the people, you don't have to be eloquent to do that. Are we all together, brothers? It's important. And eloquence does not determine whether you're right or wrong. You could be eloquent and right, and you could be eloquent and you're wrong. Does that make sense, brothers? So do not let it in any way, shape, or form make you feel that, oh yeah, I'm not as eloquent I'm, I'm just gonna hold back I'm just gonna are we all together brothers you can do it inshallah ta'ala when the truth is with you you're gonna you've got light in your hand be confident in it and go ahead and and speak it and say it it will make sense the fitrah will accept it the people will listen to your message and it will resonate with their, them are we all together brothers because remember the message and this person who's created come from one place. Sah? The wahi, the revelation, and this person, where do they both come from? 
They all come from Allah. They have to go together. They have to be compatible. So you just have to really know the revelation and inshallah ta'ala, just say it. Inshallah it will resonate with the people. Are we all together, brothers? But again, if you can always help get someone to help you get these points across better, so without doubt it's much better. And Musa did need that. Are we all together? So Musa we took what Ikhwan Ulut. Ikhwan Ulut is what? That's dangerous. We can't talk about this one, sir. So we'll move on from this one. Wa'adun Ad. We mentioned who Ad was sent to. Yeah? Hud. Wa Fir'aunu Musa. Wa Ikhwanu Lut. Why the people call Mulut? Why is it named after the Prophet? The rest we just took. The names of the people and not the prophets. But Lut, we never the name of the people is never mentioned. The prophet is always mentioned. Sah? Yeah? Why? Yeah? Yes. There was a lot of crimes, but so did the people of Nuh, the people of uh, Hud, and the people of Salih. They all did. But why is it that the Lord's people in the Quran and Nuh as well in the Quran is named after the Prophet? We hear Qawm Nuh, Qawm Lut. But here we hear Thamud, Ad, and etc. Hayya. Sah. But why after the Prophet? Okay, we're going to come to that one. Hey. Huh? So it's an amalgamation of some of your points. Some of you mentioned points and some of you mentioned other points, which is. Allah does not want a mention of the type of people they were. لا قيمة لهم لا وزن لهم A people who, who scooped to that level. Yeah. They should not be mentioned nor their names. Just say the Prophet's name. قوم الوط Are we all together brothers? لا ذكر لهم لا ذكر لهم في الأرض ولا شأن لهم في السماء أما لا ذكر لهم في السماء They have no mention in the sky and no one has value for them in this earth. You, are we all together brothers? So it goes against all sorts of fitrah. Allah then says, Wa ashabul aikati wa qawmu tubba. Ashabul aika and the qawm uh, tubba. Who's ashabul aika? This one, uh, anyone who mentions this one, there has to be some form of gift for them. I just didn't bring the gift. Who can mention to me who is ashabul aika? Habibi. Yeah? Nabiullah Shu'aib. Sahih. That's the qawm of Aika. The people of um, Shu'aib. Wa qawm Tubba. Who's Tubba? Where does this name actually even come from? Have even the Moroccan, beautiful blue Moroccan thobe. Yeah? Huh? Yes. Ahadu Muluk al Yemen. Tubba was one of the kings of um, one of the kings of Yemen. And his people was called what? Don't shout it out, just mention the people. What was the name of the people? What was, the, what was the name of the people? There's an entire surah designated around them. Are you? Yes. The people of Saba. Are we all together? Why was their name Tubba then? Why, is, why were they called Qawmu Tubba? Are you? That's not the strongest. It's mentioned, but that's no, not the strongest. Are you? That was the title of the king, but why Qawmu Tubba? No, actually Tubba is one man's name and then he became a title later, but he's referring to him. 
The reason is because he was the strongest and the most fierce ruler that ruled the people of Saba. Balqis was also one of their leaders at one point. You know that, right? Story of Sulaiman. Balqis, the woman that Sulaiman sent the letter to, and he said to her, Bismillahir Rahman al Rahim, Innahu min Sulaiman wa innahu Bismillahir Rahman al Rahim, Allah ta'alu alayya wa tuni muslimin. The woman he sent it to, Balqis, she was what? Yeah? She was? Um, uh, she, was the, she was ruling one time the people of Saba. So Saba is Yemen. Were they Arabs or non-Arabs? Arab. Remember, remember the Arabs. There is, uh, the Prophet is not Arab. Al-Ariba. Are we all together? Yani the Prophet is, he was Arabized. Nabi Allah Muhammad. But like in Saba, the people of Saba, are Arab al Ariba. They're pure Arabs from generations backwards. Are we all together? Even the people of Ad. These are now called Al Arab al Ba'idah. Al Arab al Ba'idah means they perished over time. Khalas. Intahat Amrum. Are we all together? And there was also another group that used to live in Sham, on that land of Sham. Do you know any, does anyone know who they were? It's those who were called Mulukul Ghasasina. Mulukul Ghasasina. Whose last king was what? Their last king was Jabala ibn al Ayham. Jabala has got a story, I'm going to quickly mention it. It's a powerful story. Listen to this story. Jabala ibn al Ayham was a king, fierce king, strong, respected, and he had the last and the final, um, he was the last and final king of the Muluk al Ghasasina, the last of them. At the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he wanted to embrace Islam, so he sent a letter to Umar radiyallahu anhu. And he said, I want to come, I want to embrace Islam. Umar said, wallahi, I'll, beautiful, come. He said, I'm going to come Medina, but as you know, I'm a king, I'm going to come with my force. I'm going to come with a number. So Medina won't be able to hold me, so I'll, st- I'll live in the outskirts of Medina. And I, and, I, and I should not be seen as a form of threat with my army and my men and everything. Umar said, don't worry, come. Everyone was happy when Jaivala Tumun al Ayham was coming. They were all excited. So everyone was waiting outside of the city of Medina. Everyone was waiting for the arrival of the king who's now going to embrace Islam. This is an honor for Islam. It's that reinforcing that Islam is the truth. So Jaivala Tumun al Ayham comes. He comes with an army and people and number and force and civilians that he was so and he's strong that his people not one person remained from him everyone came with him when he came he stayed in the outskirts of uh, Medina that year Umar announced that he's going to go Hajj Jabal said can I go with you Umar said yes come with me so he went Hajj with him. When they were doing tawaf around the Kaaba, Jabal was doing his tawaf around the Kaaba. One of the Muslims accidentally stepped on Jabal ibn al Ayham's ihram. Accidentally. When he stepped on it, Jabal's aura showed. Jabal ibn al Ayham came and he beat the man severely, damaged his eye in the Kaaba. The man cried to Umar radiallahu anhu. He said, Umar, Jabal ibn al Ayham did this to me. Umar said, Okay, call Jabal ibn al Ayham for me. They brought Jabal ibn al Ayham forward. He said, Jabal, did you do this? He said, Yes. Umar said, Hey, come forward. What you did to him was going to be done to you? He said, Umar, really? Umar said, yes. In Islam, everyone is equal. He said, I thought that if I embrace Islam, I will be more honored and more respected and more appreciated. Are you telling me now I'm going to be humiliated to the level that this insignificant man is going to look, is going to get, get me to, this to be done to me? No. Umar said, that is all what you want to say. But for me, I would do it to you. So you have two options. Talk to this Muslim. Convince him to forgive you. Give him what you want, money, whatever. Get him to accept. Or else, 
If he says no, I'll stick to it and I'll go through it with you. Jabal went to the man, he said, okay, listen. When he saw Umar was serious, he said, listen, okay, I'll give you whatever money you want. The man said, no, I want you to look like me. <laughs> Jabal said, ajeeb. Jabal went back to Umar ibn al-Khattab, he said, I'm going to leave Islam. Umar said, if you leave Islam, I'll kill you. <laughs> it's not just going to be an issue of the eye. I'm going to kill you. Jabal was like, okay, give me till tomorrow then. I'll come to the court, just give me till tomorrow. He went back to his people and he told them all to pack their bags and he left overnight. And he left the fold of Islam. When he left Islam, he went to the uh, Persian uh, ruler, heard of Jabal leaving Islam. For him it was a celebration. Allahu Akbar. What a beautiful thing to see this man return back to the original religion that he held. The people of Ghassassina were Christians. They had Boda, and they, because they lived in Sham. Sham was the Persian Empire. Was the, it was, uh, sorry, the, the, not the Persian, the Roman Empire. Sorry, the Roman Empire. Byzantine, right? They were controlling Sham, so he was a Christian. So when he went, they gave him a big land, and they said, this is your kingdom. Control it. You don't ever need to go back to Umar. Years went by. Umar sent a letter to the Roman Empire talking to him about something. Or one of the Roman leaders. He sent a letter to him, Umar radiallahu anhu. And he gave it to a Muslim messenger and he said, take it to the, the empire, the ruler, and uh, bring me back a response. So the Muslim left Medina, took the letter to the, uh, the disbeliever ruler. And when he got there, the ruler said to him, Umar sent you, huh? He said, yes. He said, why don't you visit your friend Jabal ibn al ayham while you're here? Why do you not want to see him? The Muslim said, I will. I'll visit him then. He said, go visit him before you go to Medina. And then after that, go to Medina. In other words, he wanted to say to him indirectly, look how we treated him and look how you guys treated him. This guy is a king. He's from the fa- his forefathers are king. We treated him with utmost respect. We gave him good care. You guys on the other hand, we're trying to take his ayah or something. <clears throat> so the Muslim messenger, he went to Jabala to Munul Ayham. Jabala was drinking alcohol and he had gold on. And he's, the gold, he crushed it and he sprinkled it on his beard. It looked very yani, extravagant. So when the Muslim entered onto him, he told him that he came from Umar. Jabalat ibn al-Ayham uh, asked him uh, to drink and he gave him a cup that was of gold and then he said to him I'm a Muslim as you know the Prophet prohibited for us to drink from cups that are made out of gold he goes no don't worry your heart is good just look at your heart it doesn't matter that's what the Christians say today right <coughs> and then Jabalat ibn al-Ayham asked him about Umar and how Umar was and he told him Umar is good, the Islamic Khilafah is growing, there's n- everything looks good, there's nothing, and matters are not like how you, it used to be. For a, few, uh, for a while there was silence, and then Jabal Tumul Ayham requested for a singer to sing some poetry in praise of uh, his people, the people of Ghassassina. And the poetry was made originally by Hassan ibn Thabit, before Islam. Hassan wrote a poetry for the people of Ghassan. Hassan, you know him, right? Hassan ibn Thabit was a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who used to give poetry for the Prophet to defend him. You all know that, right? Companion. His name is Hassan ibn Thabit. Hassan ibn Thabit, he had made a poetry for the people of Jah- Jah- Jabal ibn al-Ayyam. So the poetry was recited. He listened to the poetry, got very emotional. Jabal. And uh, he cried. He said, He says to the Muslim, he's drunk. Now when people are drunk, they always say the truth, right? <clears throat> drunk people tell you the truth. You Muslims are here to take over our country. So when they're drunk, they say everything. Sah? Go back to your country. Sah? When they're drunk, they say the truth. 
So this and uh, Jabal ibn Aham spoke his heart. He said, I left Islam. I shouldn't have left. I really regret it. All that Umar would have done to me, it would have just physically hurt me, but my heart would have been in a state of content. I chose over a slap or just one eye, I chose a humiliation and disgrace that I'm in right now. I'm not a real king and I'm not really... So the Muslim, when he heard his regret and his statements of sadness, he said to him, well, listen, things can change. There's always, way, there's always a way back. Jabal ibn Ayyam said, really? He said, yes. He said, with, really? Umar would take me back right now if I go back and embrace Islam again and gain that happiness I once had, I want it, I want it back? He said, Umar will. He said, okay, I have but conditions. So what's the conditions? So the first condition is I want to marry Umar's daughter. Umar has to marry his daughter to me. The messenger said to him, guess what? I can promise you that now. Umar won't say no. Okay? Consider that done. What's the second thing that you want? He, the second thing I want, he said, is that Umar writes for me the next person in power, that is me. If he dies, I'm next in power. I don't have to be the Khalifa to Muslim. Look, I'm the king of all kings. Like this. He said, that's not a decision Umar can make by himself. Umar can't just write you this. It's not his father's. He doesn't own the, the Khilafah. So Umar can't give you what isn't his. He goes, these are my conditions. So the Muslim, and, he, and then Jabal ibn Ayham gave the Muslim some gifts and said, give these gifts to Hassan ibn Thabit. If you see him, remind him of what he said about us and how much we appreciate him. So he gave gifts to The Muslim went and he gave the gifts to Hassan ibn Thabit. By that time, Hassan lost his eyesight. When the gifts were brought close to Hassan ibn Thabit, he could smell some of the things that were in there. He said to the people that were sitting around him, and Hassan ibn Thabit, is this, so, why can I feel something is coming from the people of Ghassasina. These people, because he remembers how they were. Anyways, the gift was given to Hassan Mutabit and Hassan took the gifts. And then the messenger went to Umar and he told Umar what happened and what took place and he told him about Jabal ibn al-Ayham and what he said to him. Umar said, as for my daughter, he should, you, it's good that you accept, you, give, you gave him that. If he becomes a Muslim and his Iman is real and he means it, and my daughter wants it. He said, why would I not? As for the kingdom, you should have just said yes to him. You should have given it to him. Why? Because when a man settles in his heart and he truly understands the message of Islam, he himself wouldn't want it. He himself would say, I don't want it. He said, really? Yes. He said, go back to him and say this to him. The man got the letter, official government letter from Umar radiallahu anhu and went back to uh, Jabal ibn al-Ayham. As he reached the destination and he got there, he saw a large number of people walking. He said, where are you guys all returning from? And they said, the funeral of Jabal ibn al-Ayham. He just passed away. So it's one of the saddest things that happened in Islamic history, right? The story of... I jumped a lot of information because we don't have time. But inshallah, look him up. Jabala ibn al-Ayham is his name. Okay? He is the last king of the people of Ghassasina. Okay? Ashabu al-Aykati wa qawmu tubba' Kullun, all of those that were mentioned. Kathaba al-Rusula, they disbelieved in the messengers. Allah then says, فَحَقَّ وَعِيد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment, the worldly punishment, it came to them. Yes, all of those people were destroyed. Do you see any one of them that wasn't destroyed? But like in when he says, wa'id dunya, just add that there. The punishment happened to them on this earth. Like in Akhirah, what about the Akhirah? Allah did not destroy them yet. Akhirah will come for them. The day of judgment and Jahannam. It's like the ayah Allah says, Everybody is destroyed based on their, their sins. فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ أَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِ حَاصِبًا وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ أَخَذَتْهُ الصَّيْحَةً وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ خَسَفْنَا بِهِ الْأَرْضِ 
فما كان الله أما ومنهم من أغرقنا وما كان الله ليظلمهم ولكن كانوا أنفسهم يظلمون It's similar to that verse Allah then says أفعينا بالخلق الأول بل هم في لبس من خلق جديد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here he says this is istifham can you not see the hamza again yeah it's called there's an istifham question here this question is a form there's a question with negation in it you're negating so you're asking but you're negating okay in other words allah ta'ala is saying we did not become tired when we first created the word afa'ayina the word al-i it means al-ajz tiredness allah said we wasn't tired it didn't cause us any fatigue uh, when we were first creating you initially okay bel rather this is bel hum rather they are what fi labsi min khalqin jadid they are the ones who are in a state of doubt allah says for them to be created what to be created from a new creation in other words Allah here is saying they know that when we first created them it wasn't hard on us so how because when if you ask them who created the seven heavens and who created the earth they tell you Allah created it they don't deny the first creating there's no dispute in their heart and mind regarding that but what is it that they believe they don't believe is the res, is the bringing back let's take some benefits inshallah and then we're gonna uh, when we take the benefits and then we're gonna take a little break and we're gonna come back inshallah the first benefit that we've taken from those verses is the people of Nuh and those who came after him from the previous nations there were those who disbelieved in their prophets we take from this from Nuh alayhi salam and on onwards the people there were two groups group who believed and groups who rejected and that Allah destroyed those who rejected the message that's what we took still on the first point and in there we take how Allah brought comfort to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam that you're not the only one who's disbelieved and rejected before you it's also happened are we all together brothers number two this proves this verse proves that Nuh was the first prophet that was sent Sah? because if there was a prophet before him okay or a messenger before him messenger before him it would have been mentioned right so who's the first messenger how do, how do why did I choose messenger and not a prophet so who's the first Rasul? That's a, this is because Allah started from the first. So Nabi Lai Nuh is the first Rasul that was sent. This proves it. Okay, and then after that Allah mentioned it, subhanahu wa ta'ala, chronologically, in order that they are at. The third benefit that we take is what? The shaitan that sent revelation. <laughs> yeah. To the people of Nuh is the same shaitan that sends revelation to these ones to disbelieve in the prophets and the messengers same thing the shaitan same thing he did to the people of Nuh and he's doing it to these people today he's whispering in their ears to reject the message of Islam and he uses two methods shubuhat or shahawat desires or doubts and he doesn't care whichever of those he achieves so that again remembering that shaitan is he's, he's been working so much for this from the time of Nuh until now the fourth and final benefit that we took was how we can refute those who reject the resurrection. That we can use the universal signs against them. We can also use the first creating. How Allah first created. If He did the first crea crea creation, okay, why is it then going to be hard on Him to create the same, bring back this human to His original form? So, to redo what you did is easier than to start something from scratch. For Allah, nothing is hard. But according to you, you've accepted the harder one and you're rejecting the easier one. It makes no sense. That's an illogical absurdity. 
Okay? We're going to take a break, inshallah ta'ala. We're going to return bi idni al kareem And then we're going to take what is remaining, inshallah ta'ala. The break is only for five minutes. So, um, it's 11.46. So, no, four minutes. 11.46, 11.50, I want you guys back, inshallah ta'ala.
الله سيز ولقد خلقنا الإنسان ونعلم ما توسوس به نفسه ونحن أقرب إليه من حبل الوريد الله هي توزى سبحانه وتعالى هي سيز ولقد خلقنا الإنسان هي الله is telling us again about the first creation he created the human being and Allah says wa na'lamu we know ma ma tuwaswisu bihi nafsuh the whispers of his nafs Allah says we know subhanahu wa ta'ala so what does it mean ma tuwaswisu bihi nafsuh the ma here is mawsula it's alladhi tuwaswisu bihi nafsuh the whispers of shaitan i mean the whispers of his nafs the thoughts that come to his mind the good and the evil of it Allah says we know it wa nahnu and we are aqrabu ilayhi more closer to him than what min habli al we are more closer to him than the uh, jugular vein lakin here when we say wa nahnu aqrabu is it that he and allah is with them he allah azza wa jalla is with them no we say allah tabarak wa ta'ala he is with them in knowledge and the angels are physically with them okay does that not mean we just did ta'wil? Did we not just divert the verse from its apparent meaning? We are more close. Why, do you, why, are you, why are you saying knowledge? Why are you restricting it to knowledge? They're going to say, if you open the door of ta'wil, open it for everybody. Why are you taking it when we want and leave it when you want? Sah? Halalun ala balabilihi dawhu Halalun littayri min kulli jinsi Is it only allowed for you When you want it you can, you can use it And when you want you leave it Ha habibi Yeah This is tafsir not ta'wil Semantics ha Yeah Ha Ha there's a group of people who believe Allah is everywhere, right? They would use this ayah. They say to you, who are you to come and exert into this verse and say, Oh, you put a word ilm inside there now. So why don't you let me do the same when it comes to Allah's hand and his, these characteristics that I mentioned? Hey, Abdul Basid. Yeah? The ayah within itself is mentioned. It mentions knowledge. So knowledge preceded it. It's in the context, right? So we're going according to that. What's the problem? That's one. The second thing is the ayah after it shows that that's one view. The second view is the next ayah shows that it's angels that he's talking about and actually not Allah. Are we all together? Is that part is referring to the angels. That's a view of some of the Mufassirin. The third one is if you, if you take this ayah as Allah is, if you take it like that, you're then going to have to say that Allah is what? Al Hulul. Well, Ittihad, they use this. So Allah is in the toilet and everywhere with the people. No one says that, right? No one would say that, right? So the ayah doesn't mean that. The ayah doesn't mean that. It means. Um, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is with them in his knowledge and the angels are physically there with, with the person إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ قَعِيدِ Allah says tabarak wa ta'ala إِذْ the time this إِذْ is ضَرْفِيَّة mm -hmm. إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ Allah says the time that This is The two angels are writing the per, 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 uh, person's deeds Every word that comes out of your mouth And every action that you do What's been done to it? It's been written The scholars now dispute Is everything written regardless of whether it's good or bad? It doesn't matter Or only the good things and the bad things are written What about the things which are mubah? You know how we joke sometimes and 
it's not haram, but it's not a good. But it's just all right. Is that also even written? Good. Allah doesn't forget. But is it written? Means he does not utter a word. Except angels are writing it. Does that mean every single word that you utter, every single statement that you make, good or bad, whether it's even normal, mubah, things which are mubah, everything's been written. Any word that comes out of your mouth, doesn't matter, good, bad, normal, okay, is that all been written? A large number of scholars believe that. That all that is, everything's written. Another group of scholars mentioned, no, only the things that are written is the good and the bad. Because that's what the reward is connected to. Are we all together? That which seems apparent is everything is written, and then later is sift. Which is good, what is bad? Everything's written. Does that make sense? And something that is okay and fine can also be in the category of haram at times if the person overdoes it, right? And etc. So everything is written. Then Allah mentions Subhanahu wa Taala, wajat sakratul maut. Allah mentions Subhanahu wa Taala that the agony of death comes. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ ذَاتْ is مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَحِيد This is what you used to avoid. The agony of death is what you used to try to run away from. Tahid means تَهْرُبُ وَتَفِرْ You wanted to run away from it and get away from it. Here it is. It's now come. It's a reality. You're seeing it. That you will be what? You will see it one day. And Allah refers to death as certainty. That's why Allah وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Because it becomes a reality. You'll see it. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَحِيدٍ Before that it was just, now it's here. Check it out. You see it for yourself. The, the, your legs are losing its nafs. Then the hands are it's moving on from there. And you're dying and you're passing away. Allah says, ذَلِكَ ذَاتْ is مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَحِيدٍ Which you used to avoid. In another ayah, Allah mentions to us, إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ ثُمَّ يُنَبِّئُكُمْ ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ He used to run away from death and try to avoid it. But today, you're going to feel it. In another place, Allah says, أَيْنَمَا تَكُونُوا يُدْرِكُمُ الْمَوْتُ وَلَوْ كُنْتُمْ فِي بُرُوجٍ مُشَيَّدًا so wherever you are, death will come to you. There's no way you can run away uh, from it. And that is one thing that we all agree on. Atheists, theists, huh? Christians, Jews, everyone agrees that death will come. Huh? Is there any dispute on that? So prepare for that, brothers, that day. Allah here refers to it, وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ Sakra means what? Yeah? Huh? It's the agony of death. In another ayah, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, spoke, he, uh, he described death to be what? Musibat al maut Musibah, calamity. So it's an agony for you, and it's a calamity for your loved ones who after you are going to feel after they lose you. Every one of us is going to die one day, brothers. There's no way around this. We're going to... Our, our days are unlimited. Every single day, we're, we're, we're moving towards that inevitable day. Our graves. One day, Abdurrahman Hassan's gone. Muhammad's gone. Zaid's gone. Khalid's gone. Death is like a long line of people. We're all in that line. And everybody drips, drinks that cup and they pass away. It's a cup that everyone's going to sip from. It's just that someone might be before you, another person might be before you. But your moment is, is coming. It's not like he's dying, I'm still alive. That's how some people are. And this issue of death, subhanAllah, brothers, al-maut, 
it's one of those things that people tend to really nowadays, it's ajeeb. I went to a burial a few years back. One brother died. In the janaz, the people were socializing. In the place that the janaz was going on, people were linking each other up and speaking and talking and having discussions and saying, I haven't seen you and I'm going to link you up later. I'm going to eat at that restaurant. Where are you going to eat? I'm hungry right now. In the janazah, my jaw dropped. Sah? The sahabas were sad when the Prophet ﷺ went to the janazah and they were looking down. Look at the tafsir of the ayah, يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَيُضِلُّ اللَّهُ الظَّالِمِينَ وَيَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ مَا يشاء. Look at the tafsir of that ayah, what Ibn Kathir brings, this long famous hadith of when the people go to their graves and what they become and everything. The sahabas were sad, heartbroken. وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ The trumpet will be blown. Who's going to blow the trumpet? Tr- trumpet. Hey, put your hands up if you know who he is. Habibi. Israfil is the angel who is muwakkalun bin nafq. His job is to blow in the trumpet. Hayya, what's the name of the angel of death? Hayya, another name? Huh? Uh, no. This is the this is the thing. Angel of death. Everywhere in the Quran, he's called what? Just malakul maut. Israfil and all these names, there's no evidence for it in the Quran wala fi sunnah. Are we all together, brothers? There's no mention of that. The angel of death, everywhere the Quran mentions Malakul Maut. Have you ever seen any other name? Like in Israfil is mentioned. And he is the angel which is what? He's gonna draw, he's gonna blow the trumpet. The Prophet told us already, 1400 something years ago, that Israfil has already placed the trumpet on his lips, on his mouth. The Prophet said, كَيْفَ أَنْعَمُوا وَصَاحِبُ الصُّورِ قَدْ إِلْتَقَمَ الصُّورِ How am I going to laugh and enjoy myself? The Prophet is saying this. When the angel of death has done what? Placed the trumpet on his mouth. And he has وَحَنَا جَبْهَتَهُ And he's brought his forehead close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waiting for him to be told, blow. And he's going to blow. And Allah mentioned to us, وَإِذَا نُفِقَ نفق فِي الصُّورِ فَصَعِقَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ نُفِقَ فِيهِ أُخْرَى فَإِذَا هُمْ قِيَامٌ يَنْظُرُونَ There's two times he blows. The first one is those who are alive are going to die. And the people that are alive that day are the worst of people. صح? This is going to be after Isa and after the Mahdi and everything. The most evil of people are going to remain. صح? The trumpet, the hour is going to be, it's going to happen on them while they're alive. The trumpet is going to take their life. Not, in, not the angel of death, the blow. That's what they're going to, they all die. Man fi wal ardi, even the angels, all of the creations die from this noise. Are we all together, brothers? But the ayah says, it says, فَصَعِقَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا Whoever Allah willed. So Nabi Muhammad mentioned that when the trumpet is blown, he said, the first person who's going to come alive is who? Huh? 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 Who is the first person who is, who's going to be given conch? Nabi Muhammad, who else? You said Musa, he, he, Muhammad, hey? Oh, another name, Ibrahim alayhi salam. There's a big ikhtilaf here issue, huh? Israfil himself. Huh? So he's going to die from blowing the trumpet first time. And then the second time? Huh? Huh? So, so he will come back without the second trumpet. So he blew the trumpet. Everyone died. So he dies. The second trumpet is the one that's going to give the people life back again. So, ha. Yeah? Ha. Ha, yeah? Ha, yeah? Ha, yeah? So he's going to be, he's going to resurrect in between the two trumpets. 
the two blows. Okay, fascinating. Hey, ha, Habibi. The angel just gonna take his own nafs, so he's not gonna die from the from the trumpet. Hey, Allahu Akbar. So much opinions. Hey, Muhammad. Hey. Okay, Muhammad said is not one of the names of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam al-Hashir. So does that not then mean everyone's going to come after him when it comes to the blowing of the trumpet? Oh yeah? I'm sure. You want to say something? Allahu <laughs> A'lam. Oh yeah? Any other views? Oh yeah, it's homework, inshaAllah ta'ala. You guys look it up. Make sure you do like him. In okay, case a long discussion. Uh, somebody mentioned Musa, it's a very good point. Somebody mentioned Ibrahim, there's a very powerful point in that issue. It's a not Mas'ala Tawila, I, I don't have time to go through it, but research it, okay? Look it up. Don't just look at it in Google research. Uh, search. Go beyond and above that. I'll tell you guys the place you can find a good answer for it. The Kitab Hadi al Arwah ila Bilad al Afrah by Ibn al Qayyim. Okay? Hadi al Arwah ila Bilad al Afrah by Ibn al Qayyim, he discusses it nicely. Those of you might think, okay, I, I can't read that book. It's a bit sophisticated. I will say, do you know that in, um, that Aqidah series that Al Ashqar did? Uh, he did a series, right? And taught me na billahi wa malaikati wa kutubi wa rusuli wa liyomil akhir wa taught me na bil qadari khayr wa sharri. Each of the six articles of faith, he wrote a book on it. Sah? Huh? I would, those of you who don't read English, uh, Arabic. Get his uh, English one where he talks about the Day of Judgment. Okay? You can download it as a PDF if you want online, copyright. Or buy the actual book, which is even better, and then use that, inshallah ta'ala. Okay? And read it. There's a, he does a nice discussion there as well. Read in the Kareem. وَجَاءَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَعَهَا سَائِقٌ وَشَهِيدٌ Everybody is going to come with them that day. سَائِقٌ an angel that's bringing you to the gathering, the mahshar. Wa shahidna, another angel that is testifying against you or for you. Everyone. You're going to be escorted. Ooh, has that ever happened to you where you've been naughty in school and then the teacher goes, let, let, come, come with me, come with me, come with me. And you have to be escorted out of the classroom. Alhamdulillah, that's never happened to me. But you get escorted out of the classroom. And then you get taken to the principal or the head teacher's uh, office. That escorting is the most terrifying. Again, I haven't felt it, but it is terrifying, right? So that day is worse, brothers. That day is what? Much worse. When the angel is escorting you, that's the sa'iq. He's telling you, come with me. I'm taking you to a spot. And the other angel, his job is to say, yes, he did say that. It's got written. No way you can deny this. He's going to tell you every statement that came out of your mouth and everything that you what? You uttered. Everyone's got that, that, day, that day. Oh, Allah, protect us. Allah then says, لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةٍ This is the problem we have now. This is all going to happen. But you guys are heedless. You're going to wake up that day like him. That day you're going to all wake up and realize... Whoa, it is different. You guys were all heedless of this particular day. And what was going to happen? You didn't read about it. You didn't study it. You didn't look at it. You were heedless of all of this. Even the day of judgment and the resurrection. You were so ignorant and unaware of death and the agony of death. All of that. لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مِنْ هَذَا Allah then says فَكَشَّفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ Allah says we have now removed from your eyesight that heedlessness that thing that was covering your eyes is now being removed from you now you see everything for what it really is صح? are we all together brothers? a few uh, weeks back I started water fasting for health reasons, I started to water fast. The whole entire day, just drink water, nothing else, don't eat. So you do the next day the same thing. 
And then the next day you do the same thing. You just stay on water fasting. When I came back to eating, the food, I could taste every single thing in the food. The salt, I could feel it, how strong it was. The drinks, I used to love drinking. I realized how much sugar is in it. I'm like, Arudu Billah. My taste buds came back. So it, everything went back to its natural state. The person will be brought back to his natural state that day to see everything for what it is. That ghita, that cover that you placed over your own eyes because you destroyed your iman and your qalb, that veil will be removed. So now you see everything for what it is. Similar thing, if your ear gets blocked for a few days, you can't hear with it properly. And then you go and it gets fixed and you can start hearing the little noise. You're like, wow, wow. The veil has been removed from you. You can, I will together brothers. That day that's going to happen. All the things that you were heedless about and you were unaware of and you just didn't see it for what it was, it's all going to come out. Are we all together, brothers? فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدٍ The eyesight of that person is what? فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ الْحَدِيدٍ What does it mean, حديد? It means حَاد قوي. Your eyesight, your sight and seeing, your insight, that day is very sharp. Very sharp. You can see everything. Wow. Everything is now hitting you. And that's why Allah told us in the Quran, Heedlessness. Just living in that little bubble. That day you're going to wake up and say, La ilaha illallah, why did I waste my life of just running after this corporate job alone? Why didn't I just do adhkar while I was standing? Why did I not recite Quran? Why did I not pray qiyamul layl? Why did I, why did I? It's a state of regret. The pain comes to the person. Then, let's take the benefits from those verses. Hey, the first benefit. Allah mentions to us that there are two angels. We learn from here, إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ قَعِيدٍ That there are two angels. Okay? These angels, what do they do? They write your deeds. The first one is on the right and the other one is what? On your left. Okay? And what do they write? They write everything you say and everything you do. That's what we learnt. The second thing that we took was how important it is that you know Allah is looking at you subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muraqabatullah. Allah is observing you and looking at you and that you're always looked at. That's why when people know there's a camera recording them, they act a certain way. صح? That's the same thing that happens when the person loses the knowledge of muraqabatullah. وَمَا تَكُونُ فِي شَأْنٍ وَمَا تَتْلُوا مِنْهُ مِنْ قُرْآنٍ وَلَا تَعْمَلُونَ عَمَلًا إِنَّا كُنَّا عَلَيْكُمْ شُهُودًا إِذْ تُفِيضُونَ فِي صح? Muraqabatullah. If you know Allah is looking at you, you know you studied that properly and you know it very well, what's going to happen? You, that camera or that camera or that camera or this camera will not you know every day who's looking at you and every split second knows what you're up to and what you're doing Allah that's the one that should terrify you and scare you huh? are we all together brothers humans when, if, if there was no CCTV cameras or speed cameras what would brothers do on, on driving if you knew there was no speed cameras they just told you don't drive like this and there was no speed cameras what would you do yeah yeah say it with your chest brothers you will speed, right? Why is it that you do, why, why is it that you guys don't speed? Don't say it's the right thing to do. <laughs> don't say that. Because you know it's not. Yeah? You're scared of the consequences. Ah. You know the ticket's gonna come to your house, they're gonna take money from you. And then it's gonna affect the money hata, if it was just only money, brothers will still drive fast, ah. So what's the real reason why you it's the points? You're gonna, the privilege of being able to drive will end. They will take it from your card. Sah. So my brothers, that's why in the Middle East, generally why there's a lot of accidents is that you could drive fast. You, you don't use, lose your license in Saudi Arabia if you drive fast. Now they're starting that now. But before, you just get fine, fine, fine. These Arabs, Allah Mubarak, they're blessed like that when it comes to money. So they're ready to pay the money. And the speed doesn't stop, it's not stopping. 
So they, have to real, they realize that they have to what? There's, there has to be more consequences. So, muraqabatullah is that, brothers. And you know Allah is looking at you and there's consequences to that. Number six, death, there is no way around it. There's no medication that the uh, medical industry is going to make that we can live forever, brothers. Sah? Are we all together? They're trying that right now. They're trying, sah, to live forever. Medications and things like that, they want to do. Ah, that's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. You're going to die. Sah, brothers? You're going to die. So we learned that from the ayah. When Allah said, وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَحِيدٍ You used to avoid it by taking this medication, uh, make yourself look younger, put, uh, f- f- paint your face and call it makeup. And then, what do you call it? Um, inject yourself. And then this and that. And just make yourself look younger and younger. You can do all of that, brothers. صح? Make your beards white. Eh, sorry, well, not white, black. And everything. Just so you look young. You can do all of that. But you can't do anything about death. It will come and you have to leave this world. We also learned about an nafhu fi sur. There's a trumpet that's going to be blown into. We learn about that. And that is going to make the hour occur with the permission of Allah. And also resurrection as well. We also learned, which is the next point, that there are two angels. One that's going to take you to the mahshar, the place of gathering. And another angel that's going to witness against you or for you. He's a witness. He's going to mention the good that you did and the bad that you did. And the last benefit that we took was that heedlessness is the trait of the human being. al ghafla We're unaware of all of this that's going to take place. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَقَالَ قَرِينُهُ هَذَا مَا لَدَيَّ عَتِيدٌ أَلْقِيَا فِي جَهَنَّمَ كُلَّ كَفَّارٍ عَنِيدٌ بعيد قال لا تختصموا لدي وقد قدمت إليكم بالوعيد ما يبدل القول لدي وما أنا بظلام للعبيد الله says وقال قرينه the قرين here this person who disbelieved who rejected there's an angel that's assigned, he's called the Kharin. That angel, his job is to preserve and observe your actions and your speech. So your Kharin is going to say, This was my job. This, was, this is what I was assigned to do as an angel in the world. And that is, I was assigned, my job was to come forward and today to mention your mistakes and your shortcomings if there is anything you've done. I'm present. I'm going to mention what you said and did without increasing on it. I'm not going to exaggerate anything and I'm not going to take anything away. So here is your actions and here's what you do. And here's what you did. Once it comes out, the documents are open and your scrolls are looked into and then it's seen that you failed. You failed miserably. Criminal. You deceived. You cheated and you lied. It will be said, Al-Qiyahu, throw him or her. al fi jahannama. Throw this man or throw this woman. In what? Fi jahannama, the hellfire. Kulla kafanin anid. Every disbeliever who is stubborn and hard-headed Throw him into the hellfire. There are two angels. The one that was testifying, is, he's testified. He's given his answer. He said, here I am. This is my, this is my findings. Yeah? These are my findings. This guy's a criminal. This is what he did. The document is here. Then after that is clear, you're going to go to the hellfire. Jahannam wa bi'sal masir. What was this person's issue? Man na'il lil khayri mu'tadi munib. 
Manna'in, this individual was a manna'. Manna' means rejecting of all forms of good. Yani manna'in lil khair. He didn't want to take the good and nor did he let other people take good. Mu'tadin is an individual who exceeded his limits. Murib, a person who is in a state of doubt. He didn't even believe this day with conviction. State of doubt, shak and all of that. The mu'tad is a person with dhalum and ghashum. A person who is oppressive, exceeds his limits with his hands and with his tongue. He insults and belittles and ridicules other people. And he is murib, a person of doubt. Now Allah describes him, الذي the one جعل مع الله إلها آخر He has made a God besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He worships it. فألقياه في العذاب الشديد This one is going to go into the hellfire in a very severe place. He came with shirk. قال قرينه ربنا ما أطغيته ولكن كان في ضلال بعيد The angels will speak. What will they say? قال قرينه And this is his shaitan, right? Yeah? He will say, Rabbana, my Lord, ma atgaitu, I did not. Um, so there's two views on the Qareen. Qawl I mentioned, which is the Qawl of Ibn Jarir and his ikhtiyar. And so, the second Qawl is that it's shay- shaitan. The shaitan will say, I did not, Ya Rabb, I was not the one who did this to him. He did this to himself. He transgressed. It's his fault. He was the one that was upon clear misguidance. Remember your shaytan that you followed all those years that you listened to waqala shaytan lamma qudiya al-amr inna allaha wa'adakum wa'ada al-haqq wa wa'adtukum fa akhlaftukum yani surah ibrahim allah mentions it he's been misguiding you for so many years he's been whispering to you today he's going to free himself from you okay i'm not to do with you i spoke to you and you listen it's your fault don't blame me and i've seen that happen to brothers who are on the streets they listen to their friend he's a shaytan صح you listen to him you did what he told you to do the minute the police came, he ran away from you. You got caught, you got snatched, you got taken to prison, and khalas, you're there. Criminal record. It's a crime that you didn't do by yourself, or you did it, but you know, they did it with you, or you didn't even do it at all. And he did it. But he ran away, and he got away with it. And he's, you can't be a snitch. Snitches get put in stitches. That's what they tell you. So then you're scared and you're terrified. So you can't snitch on anybody. So you spend nine years, come out, and then you got criminal record, and your life. In that time when you're in prison, your mom might die, your father might die, you might... Nine years of your life has been taken away from you, snatched from you. You could have had children, you could have graduated, you could have had so much in your life. All of that, because of that evil friend, that shaitan. Are we all together, brothers? And then now, if he's done that to you on this earth, and he's abandoned you in this dunya, Billahi alaikum, by Allah, I ask you, is he going to come Yawm al-Qiyamah and say, Ya Rabb, I'll take the Jahannam for him. Yeah? It tabarra al ladina tubiu min al ladina tabaru wara ul adaba wa takata atibihim ul asbab. He's going to free himself. He's going to say, I don't want anything to do with you. Allah then says, Qala la takhtasimu ladeya wa kadakadam tu ilaykum bil wa'id. Do not debate. Do you not argue in front of me. There's, today is not the day to argue. Qala la takhtasimu ladeya. Do not argue in front of me. Ha. This pro- these statements I've already told you a long time ago. You were told about Jahannam. You were told about Jannah. You were told about everything. Why are you now sh- arguing? Stop arguing. صح? There's no way to, around this. Allah then says, ما يبدل القول لدي وما أنا بظلام للعبيد. Nothing's going to be changed today. Everything is going to what? It's going to be the way they are. This book that has written your actions and your speech is not going to be changed. Everything's going to remain there. That's it. That's how it's going to be. Allah is saying, I also did not oppress you. Nothing was added. Nothing was subtracted. Did you not say this? Yes, I did. Did you not do this? Yes, I did. You can't even deny it. Even if you try to deny it, what will be done to you? Your body will start talking. Your body will start talking. If you try to say, "Um, um, no, but I didn't do how. Prove when you stop, humans are like that, right? You catch them red-handed stealing something as well. No, I was just trying to look at it. How more clear can it be? Humans will try to find a loophole and try to argue. But that day, what will happen? 
His body limbs, his body parts will talk. And then he will say to his body parts, Why are you talking? Why are you snitching on me? Yeah? Why are you snitching? I'm trying to save you from the hellfire. But they will say, We've been made to speak today. Are we all together, brothers? So there is nothing that can be changed that day. Yawmanakulu, the day Allah says, we say to Li Jahannama, we say to Jahannam, Halim Talati, are you full? Watakulu Halmi Mazi. Jahannam will say, Oh Allah, do you have more for me? Jahannam is full. Everyone that needed to be in Jahannam is in it. That's it. Jahannam will be asked, Are you full now? You got everyone you needed. They will say, La Ya Rabb. If you have more, I want it. I've still got space. That's the type of place it is. Actually, Jahannam, when it sees its people, it recognizes them. It knows his people. Allah says, إِذَا رَأَتْهُمْ مِنْ مَكَانٍ بَعِيدٍ سَمِعُوا لَهَا تَغَيُّضًا وَزَفِيرًا That Jahannam, when it sees them from far, it starts to roar and make noise. It knows its people. It recognizes them. How can people who are righteous and noble and people who are criminals that day look the same? They can't look the same. They don't look the same. So shaitan already knows who, uh, sorry, Jahannam already knows its people. Look what Allah says. So then how is Jahannam going to be filled? The narrations mention Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He places His foot in Jahannam and it swallows itself. And then it says, okay, enough, enough, enough. The narrations, they show this. There's no other way to fill it up. And that's in a way that Allah knows how, He does it in a way that befits His Majesty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Look what then Allah says. This is the Quran. Allah mentioned the criminals and the wrongdoers. Now He's going to remind us the good people. May Allah make us from them. Ya Rabbal Alameen. Allah says, وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٍ Now Jannah is brought. Who is Jannah brought to? Mm -hmm. Let's take benefits first before we go move on. Yeah, and it benefits up to the 29th verse, okay? So, from ayah what? Ayah 23 to ayah 29, okay? The benefits. Because we already took up to 22, right? Now we're going to do 23 to what? 29. The benefits in this is, everyone has a qareen from the angels who protect and observe your actions. وَقَالَ قَرِينُهُ هَذَا مَا لَدَيَّ عَتِيد. Okay, we took that. We also took that the angels will be commanded to throw the criminals and the disbelievers into the hellfire. Al fi jahannam kulla kafarin anid. Are we all together, brothers? The third benefit that we took is what. The description of the people of the hellfire. This is the description of the people of the Nar, those who deserve to be thrown into the hellfire. The fifth that we mentioned, was it the fifth or the fourth? Yeah? The fourth one. How Shaitan frees himself from the people who he, who he misguided. When he says, قَالَ قَرِينُهُ رَبَّنَا مَا أَطْغَيْتُهُ وَلَكِنْ كَانَ فِي الضَّلَالٍ بَعِيدٍ He says, oh Allah, I did not misguide this person. He was already a clear-cut misguided individual in the first place. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ إِنَّ اللَّهُ عَدَكُمْ وَعَدَ الْحَقِّ We mentioned that. أَمَّا كَمَثَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِذْ قَالَ لِلْإِنسَانِ كفر فَلَمَّا كَفَرَ قَالَ إِنِّي that Allah wa Ta'ala is Rabb, Rububiyyah. Because of the ayah mentions, Rabbana ma atgaytu, Rabbana. And that Rububiyyah means Allah is the creator, the sustainer, the provider, and etc. We also learn that Allah has established the proof against the people already. Because that's what Allah says, Qala la takhtasimu ladayya wa qad qaddamtu ilaykum bil wa'id. I already, sent, I already spoke to you about this before, when you were in the dunya. I warned you guys in the dunya. So no one can use an excuse now and say, it hasn't reached me. Some people can, who the evidence may not have reached. 
But these people Allah is punishing here are people that the proof has reached them. Okay? What we also take from this is shaitan and an evil nafs, if they come together, the destruction it can cause a person is limitless, brothers. Okay? That's what you have to understand. Shaitan is already out there and your nafs is not purified and it's not clean. You are going to fall far, far deep into the hellfire. Imagine that, brother, this. Shaitan wa nafsul amarati bisu. What's left? How can you stop yourself? Are we all together, brothers? That's the problem here. We also talk that the judgment for Allah wa ta'ala when it comes to the disbelievers is eternal hellfire. Not sometime or it's internal forever. We take that. And last but not least, we take Allah is not oppressive. He's very just. Allah does not oppress the creation. He is fair and just. Then we take, we're going to now take, يَوْمَ نَقُولُ لِجَهَنَّمَ هَلِمْ تَلَأْتِ وَتَقُولُ هَلْ مِمْ مَزِيدٍ وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٍ هَذَا مَا تُوَعَدُونَ لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَفِيظٍ مَنْ خَشِيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ مُنِيبٍ أُدْخُلُوهَا بِسَلَامٍ ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْخُلُودِ لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٍ يوم نقول the day Allah says we say to Jahannam Halim talati jahannama, are you full? Yeah? So here we say, yawma naqulu. But according to Nafi' and Abu Bakr and Asim, and Shu'ba and Asim, they read it as yawma yaqulu, not yawma naqulu, in a different recitation. Mm -hmm. It's a different recitation. They read it with a ya. And the other remaining, they recite it as a what? Yawma naqulu, yawma naqulu, noon. So the day Allah says, we say to Jahannam, Halim talati, are you full? What does it say? It says, is there more? Wa uzlifati al-jannah. Jannah will be brought. Jannah, jannah will, will, will be? It will be brought. And when it's brought, it's brought for who? And it will be brought close. Uzlifa means when you bring something very close. Jannah will be brought very close. Mm-hmm. And who is it for? Lil Muttaqira, for the people of Taqwa. Ghayra Ba'idin, not too far. Hadha jis Jannah is ma tu aduna li kulli awabin hafid. Now Allah is going to mention to us the description of the people who deserve to be put in Jannah. The people who were made from the people of Jannah, this is their characteristics. They are a web. That's number one. Just write that word or underline it. A web. That's the first quality that they have. Okay? Second is Hafiz. So, what does Awab mean? Awab means the person who's Rajah, Ta'ib. He's always coming back to Allah for with, with, with repentance. And whenever he does a sin, he's run back to his Lord. That's what their first quality is Awab. He, they're always repenting, repenting, repenting on repeat, repeating all the time. That's number one. Hafiz. Hafiz is what? They safeguard Allah's boundaries. The, so they do hifz of the awamir, the commandments of Allah and the prohibitions. And there's many places in the Quran where Allah used the word hafiz. Sah? What does he say? وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ فَمَنِ بَتَغَى وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْعَادُونَ So they protect their private part. That's hifz. Also, Allah Tabarak wa Taala, He mentions to protect the salah. What does He say? Say that again, ayah. Yeah. Hafizu ala salawati wa salati al-wusta wa qumu lillahi 
Qariteen. Many places Allah mentions it. And I encourage you all, brothers and sisters, this book is translated in English and it's also in Arabic. It's the advice that the Prophet gave to the noble companion Abdullah ibn Abbas. This book, Ibn Rajab explained it. And when he went through he brought ayat, aqwal, so much. I'll tell you guys a quick one. It was mentioned about a, a man who reached age of 100 and he jumped from his camel or his horse. 100 and he jumped from it. They said to him, Allahu Akbar, what are you doing? Are you not scared for your bones and your flesh? And then what did he say? He said, Hafidhnaha, the word Hafidh. When we were young, we protected our body from sins and haram and everything. We kept our body upright on righteous deeds and righteous speech. And now Allah is looking at after for us at this age that we're in. And we're together, brothers. So when you come with the quality of hifz, Allah will take care of you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us brothers and sisters. May Allah make us from the people who are awabin hafidh. Man rahmana bil ghayb. Look at the quality of these people. Another quality that's mentioned from them is they are man khashiyar rahman. They fear Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Khashiya. When is it that they have? Bil ghayb. Not in the eyes of the people only, but privately. They're very khashiya. Also, the quality is what? Waja'a bi qalbi munib. They come with a heart that is so upright and so good they're clean-hearted people that's another quality that they have those are the people of the people of jannah are we all together brothers this ayah now mentions some of the qualities of the people of jannah in surah al-ra'd allah mentions that look at those characteristics and ponder over them i think another time it would be nice to just take that portion of that character the ayah where he mentions the people of Jannah, who they are and their qualities. It will be very nice. There's so much benefit in there. What, what would it be said to these people? Uduhuluha bi salam. Enter Jannah peacefully. You don't have to worry. Guess what, brothers, after that? So you're going to enter as a VIP. Imagine, brothers, Jannah to Firdaus. Brothers, there's nothing to worry about after this. You're walking to Jannah. Bi salam. And guess what? Dalika yawmul khulud. You're going to stay here forever, don't worry. Forever and ever. And you don't have to ever worry. The believers, when it's told to them, the narration mentions, if anybody would have died out of happiness, they would have died out of happiness. And the people of hellfire, when it's told to them, the kuffar, that this is the place you're going to be here forever and ever and ever. And you're not, never going to come out of this place. They are, if anyone would have died out of agony and pain, and shock is them. كُلَّمَا نَضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَهَا لِيَذُوقُ الْعَذَابِ Every time their skin peels off and it goes off their system. Ya, just again. Again. Are we all together, brothers? May Allah make us from the people of Jannah. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah then says, لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا They have everything they ever wanted. Brothers, you can, you can marry as much as you want. Yeah. You can eat and drink whatever you want. Allah says, for us is what? Mazid. What is Waladayna Mazid? They're going to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jannah is nothing compared to seeing Allah. Imagine those years of your life that you were putting your face on the ground and you were worshipping Him and you were begging Him and you were connecting yourself to Him. Now you are honored to see your Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're going to see him. لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَةِ By the way, أُدُخُلُوهَا بِالسَّلَامِ The word salam is actually the greeting of the people of Jannah. This is the conversation. When we meet each other, it's just peace. No worry, no stress. All of it is for them. Allah mentions in another ayah, سَلَامٌ قَوْلًا مِنْ رَبِّ الرَّحِيمِ Even Allah is saying, salam, peace be upon you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what's going to happen. وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يَدْخُلُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ بَابٍ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِمَا صَبَرْتُمْ فَنِعْمَ عُقُبَ الدَّارِ Peace brothers, no stress, no agony, no nothing to worry about. May Allah make us from those people. Ya Rabbil Alameen. 
and also walladayna mazid and also you're going to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah then says subhanahu wa ta'ala after that okay let's take the benefits from this much the first benefit that we speak we take from it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks ha, Allah says yawma naqulu the day we will say and the noon here if we say yawma naqulu the noon here is what al mu'azzimu nafsahu it's not it's not plurality it's not plural it's royalty we as in Allah by himself he's talking about himself as a royal okay we will say Allah is saying jahannam so Allah speaks yawma naqulu the day we say so we affirm for Allah's speech subhanahu wa ta'ala the second benefit that we take is how big Jahannam is صح? if all of these kuffar from the time of يعني, creation those who disbelieved until today until the, sorry until the day of judgment all of those kuffar and even usat al as some of the sinners of the Muslims are all in Jahannam and Jahannam still saying more what does that show us how deep Jahannam is Jahannam is what very very deep all of those people are entering it it shows that it can hold a lot so brothers another benefit we take from it is jahannam responds are we all together it talks and this is a refutation on those who say we can't affirm speech for allah because if we do we're going to have to affirm allah's teeth and tongue and all of that we can't do that so we don't want to affirm speech for allah we will say but when you guys look at jahannam speaking you don't think of that do you so you say Jahannam is speaking in a way that befits Jahannam. So why can't you say the same thing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? صح? Also, we learn from here how close Jannah is to the, belief, the people of Taqwa. صح? وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٌ Jannah is very close to them. We also benefit from it that the bliss of Jannah and Jahannam is physical, not just. Some people think that the the punishment and the reward is not going to have physically happen to the person; it's just going to happen to their nafs. No, that's the grave. The grave, the body is not burnt, but it's the the nafs. It's like when you have a bad dream and you wake up and you're sweating, you're like. <sighs> The nafs, is being, the nafs just went through a lot. So you feel that pain and everything. That's what the qabr is. Okay? Like in Jahannam is what? Physically and it is also spiritually. Everything. You feel the pain everywhere. Okay? Also, what we take from here is the usage of the name Ar-Rahman. Man khashya Ar-Rahman. Allah chose that name because He wants to remind you, I'm merciful. Yes, I did create Jahannam. And yes, I am going to punish the people in Jahannam. But I'm very merciful so you can turn back to me. Because He just mentioned before that, لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَفِيظٍ مَنْ خَشِيَ Rahman. He didn't say, مَنْ خَشِيَ Allah. So Ar-Rahman here is meant to show you that Allah is merciful. He is really merciful to you. He, is, he wants Jannah for you. So work for it. We also take from this the difference between fearing Allah privately and publicly. And how these people earned it was that they did it publicly, uh, privately. And if anyone does something privately, he's also going to do what? Without a doubt. Also what we take from this is what? The human has a free will. لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ if we didn't have free will, Allah wouldn't have said they will get whatever they want or whatever they will. Shows that humans has free will. We also take from it is to stay away from the things that will lead you to the hellfire and to come with the things that will make you from its people, uh, so from, that will make you from the people of Jannah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا قَبَلَهُمْ مِنْ قَرْنٍ هُمْ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُمْ بَطْشًا فَنَقَّبُوا فِي الْبِلَادِ هَلْ مِنْ مَحِيصٍ 
إن في ذلك لذكرى لمن كان له قلب أو ألقى السمع وهو شهيد ولقد خلقنا السماوات والأرض وما بينهما في ستة أيام وما مسنا من لغوب فاصبر على ما يقولون وسبح بحمد ربك قبل طلوع الشمس وقبل الغروب ومن الليل فسبح هو أدبار السجود Let's take it after salah, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, after the salah, or after the adhan. What time is the salah? Yeah? What time? 1.15. Ah, so we have time, inshallah ta'ala. Let's take this portion, and after salah, we come back, and we start from, وَاسْتَمِعْ يَوْمَ يُنَادِ الْمُنَادِ مِنْ مَكَانٍ قَرِيبٍ Allah here, he says, وَكَمْ How many أَهْلَكْنَا قَبَلَهُمْ Have we destroyed nations مِنْ قَرْنٍ هم أشد منهم بطشا. You guys think Allah is saying to Kufar Quraysh, you guys think that you're strong and you're powerful and this and you're mighty, but Allah is saying I have destroyed nations who are bigger, power, more powerful than you guys. I destroyed them, I annihilated them. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying. So that's what it means. من قرن هم أشد منهم بطشا. That were more stronger. We destroyed them, Allah wa Ta'ala said. Then Allah wa Ta'ala He mentions Then Allah wa Ta'ala He says, Fanakabu fil biladi hal mil mahis. These people they travel the earth. Yani naqabu, yani saru fiha. They Traveled on this earth, طولاً وعرضاً, upwards and downwards, they did. And we know that the people of uh, Ad, Allah, what did He tell us about them? He hasn't created anyone like them. They were very, you know, the mountains that we have today. What do you need to do in order to get into it? If you want to build something around it or make a road around it or anything, they use these cars, these caterpillars cars, right? And they drill it for days and it takes time and everything. Some narrations mention the people of Ad used to use their hands. That's they made their they made their houses in the mountain with their own hands. They carved it with their own hands. All together, that's the kind of creation where they rip the mountain out, and over time they will carve it with their hands and they will do. us, la ilaha illallah We don't have any of that, sah. Ma'adalika, we believe what? We believe that we are. Arrogant and full of ourselves. So these are the people Allah is saying to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. These people in Mecca who are arrogant, who think all of these things of, of, of themselves, Allah has destroyed greater and more powerful people than 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 them. Inna fi dalika I want to advise you. I wish we had a lot of time to go through all of this. I initially requested for these classes not to be in one set. I wanted it to be in. Uh, my whole tour to just be this surah and just teach it here. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday to go through just surah to qaf. So much benefits that can be taken. But now I'm encouraging you all to go to this ayah. Inna fi dhalika la dhikra li man kana lahu qalbun aw alqa sam'a wa huwa shaheed. Get the kitab al-fawaid by Ibn al-Qayyim. The first benefit he starts with is this ayah. He extracts so much fawaid from it. Please go to that Kitab Al-Fawaid, not Bada'i' Al-Fawaid, no. He has another Kitab called Al-Fawaid, Ibn Al-Qayyim. And I'm not sure, but I think it's translated in English. It's a small, it's just one volume, okay? Ibn Al-Qayyim wrote every benefits that came to his heart and mind. And he started with this ayah, Inna fi dhalika la dhikra. If we had time, I would have read that for you guys. and shown you all the benefits that extracted from, from that verse. Allah then says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ we created the samawat and we created the ard. وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا And we created everything in between it. فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ Allah says we create it in six days. Allah then says وَمَا مَسَّنَا مِنْ لُغُوبٍ When we created it, we didn't become tired. يعني تعب It wasn't like He created and it was like exhausted and tired from what He just did. No, not at all. Allah then says to the Prophet فَصْبِرْ نَوِي اللَّهِ مُحَمَّدْ Be patient. عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ What they say to you. 
وسبح بحمد ربك and what praise your Lord Allah قبل طلوع الشمس وقبل الغروب in the morning and in the evening praise and glorify your Lord Allah تبارك وتعالى be consistent upon doing that ومن الليل at night time now what do you do Allah says فسبحه exalt him سبحانه وتعالى وأدبار السجود and also exalt Allah تبارك وتعالى in your in your sujood or after your prayer the benefits that we take from here are as follows number one Allah tabarak wa ta'ala how he deals with the disbelievers who go against their prophets and their messengers Allah destroys them subhanahu wa ta'ala severely and the evidence for that is wa kam ahlakna قَبْلَهُمْ مِنْ قَرْنٍ هُمْ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُمْ بَطْشًا فَنَقَّبُوا فِي الْبِلَادِ هَلْ مِنْ مَحِيصٍ Number two, that it's very important that we read the stories of the previous nations. That we look at it, and we observe it, and we look at the different types of punishments that were given to them. And the reason for that, where did I get that from? إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَذِكْرَى لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ أَوْ أَلْقَى السَّمْعَهُ الشَّهِيدٌ That we open our hearts and our minds to looking at these stories and reading it. That's why I say, brothers and sisters, the person, the more he knows history than you, the more accurate he can, he can the person who knows history, can, to an extent, he can, has the ability to predict what the future might be. Because history repeats itself. That's a qaida. And Allah, the way he does things, does not change universally. Are we all together, brothers? So the more you read about the past, the more you can maneuver around in the future. That's why the Arabs they say at tarikh yu'idu nafsah history repeats itself study history learn about history I remember one in uh, the feminist group they are against the, the usage of the word history because history is his story <laughs> You guys know that they don't like it they don't like it so when they come up with another word inshallah ta'ala we will look into that inshallah but read tarikh. Okay, read what? Read the tarikh. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا Verily we have created the samawat and the ard. That's another benefit that we take from it is that the creation around us is all by Allah. Some people believe that the wali did it and the awliya did None of that did. No one created one another. All of this is created by who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَا مَلَكٌ مُقَرَّبُ وَلَا نَبِيٌ مُرْسَلٌ Allah is the one who created the seven heavens and the earth and all the creations. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one helped him. And Allah did not get tired in creating it. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he did it. The other benefit that we take from it is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala morally supports the Prophet He always supports him in his message. And the way Allah supported him here is by giving him the, the, the cure that he needs. The... Yani for, for the way to go forward. And what is it that he Allah Taala prescribed for him? Allah mentioned for him Wasabbih bihamdi Rabbika Kabala Kuru Ishamsi wa Kabala al Gurub. So those people who are down and they do tasbih say subhanallah, 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 increase in saying that. In the morning and in the evening and the afternoon. Don't let your tongue dry from the remembrance of Allah. Wallahi that helps you, brothers, through times of hardship and stress. And the Prophet was also the night prayer and the importance of the night prayer we benefit from that here which is when Allah said وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَسَبِّحْ at night time exalt Allah pray worship Him subhanahu wa ta'ala we benefit from that what we also take from here is a very fascinating thing Allah just did فَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ what did Allah say وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ سَحْ Exalt and then praise. This is a principle that we all we all have to remember. You have to first clean before you adorn. Tasbih is to what? Cleanse and the hamd is what? To adorn. And that's a principle. If you want if I want to drink water from this bottle, I have to first clean the bottle and then pour water in it. Okay? So what do you need to do? 
get rid of all of these deficiencies and these problems that you have and then you, when you do good deeds it will stick and it will stay for you inshallah ta'ala last but not least yarhamukallah <coughs> last but not least what we benefit is the virtuous times to remember and exalt and praise Allah are mentioned here the morning the evening and when the sun sets and at night Laylatul those three times we all know that the three are, are, are what Adhkar al-Sabah wal and also Qiyamul Layl those three point times were selected for the Prophet والسلام, and you Muslim have to look look after it we've got 10 minutes left inshallah ta'ala I think we can do huh? we can do the the last portion that we need inshallah ta'ala then Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he says وَاسْتَمِعْ يَوْمَ يُنَادِ الْمُنَادِ مِنْ مَكَانٍ قَرِيبٍ يَوْمَ يَسْمَعُونَ الصَّيْحَةَ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْخُرُوجَ إِنَّا نَحْنُ نُحْيِي وَنُمِيتُ وَإِلَيْنَا الْمَصِيرُ يَوْمَ تَشَقَّقُ الْأَرْضُ عَنْهُمْ سِرَاعًا ذَلِكَ حَشْرٌ عَلَيْنَا يَسِيرٌ نحن أعلم بما يقولون وما أنت عليهم بجبار فذكر بالقرآن من يخاف وعيد. In these verses, there are these points. Inshallah, I'm just going to mention the points. Inshallah, the translation you guys can look up it. The first thing that we take from these uh, verses. The first forty-first uh, to the forty-fifth is the following, um, brothers. If you can, students of not, yeah. If you guys can start moving this way a little bit, we only, we, we can finish it. Inshallah, Taala. The these verses, the benefit that we take from it, and the rulings that we also take from it, the fawaid and the ahkam, is number one. The hour is very close. وَاسْتَمِعْ يَوْمَ يُنَادِ الْمُنَادِ مِنْ مَكَانٍ قَرِيبٍ The hour is close, my brothers and sisters. It's not far. That's why Allah mentioned in the Quran, إِنَّهُمْ يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا وَنَرَاهُ قَرِيبًا صح? It's not too far. إِقَ تَرَبَتِ السَّاعَةِ وَانْشَقَّ الْقَمَرُ Allah also says, إِقَ تَرَبَ لِلنَّاسِ حِسَابُهُمْ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مُعْرِضُونَ So it's close, it's not too far. We think it's far. So that's the first benefit that we take from it. The second benefit that we inshallah ta'ala take from this is how Allah wa ta'ala is the one who takes life and the one who gives it. Inna nahnu nuhyi wa numit. Allah gives life and he gives death subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one who, he, who, who deserves to do that. He can only, he's the one who has the rights to take people's lives and he is the one who has the rights to what? And the power to give it to people. We also take from this the earth is going to be split when the hour comes from the signs is yawma tashaqqaqul ardu anhum sira'a the earth is going to be split open so that the people who are inside their graves can come out it's a benefit that we take so it's not like they're going to pop out of the ground and the ground still closed it will open up for them to come out Allah knows how that's going to be what we also take from this is dhalika hashrun alayna yaseer the benefit that we take from this is ithbatul hashr that there is gathering that's going to take place wajam'ul khala'iq yawm al qiyamah all of us are going to be gathering in front of Allah yawm al qiyamah arasat yawm al qiyamah everyone's going to stand there also the benefit we take from this is how again Allah reassures the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam that he's going to take care of him and that he's going to honor him and that he doesn't have to worry what people think or say about him Allah is going to take care of him and Allah is aware of him. That, that, that word بِمَا يَقُولُونَ Muhammad, we know what they're saying to you. Don't worry. Is a tasliya. Are you there, brothers? If a, if a powerful person says that to you, you'll be like, okay, man, I don't need to worry now. Alhamdulillah. If you're, he says, you know what? I know what they're up to. Trust me. I'm, I'm, I know everything. Trust me. I'll take care of it. How would you feel? Allah is saying, نَحْنُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ 
So this is the highest level of tasliya. Tasliya means reassurance, not to worry. And this does show us, brothers and sisters, that he, a person can feel sad for what other people say. It doesn't mean that iman is low. Some people are like, Akhi, your iman is da'if. Why? When people say things about you, why are you sad for? Allah says, نَحْلُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ in another ayah, Allah Tabarak Ta'ala says, says to the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Salam, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ We know that it tightens your chest. بِمَا يَقُولُونَ That which they say. So the words do affect people in a negative way. صح? That's why the Arabs, they actually say that the word kalam comes from what? Kalim. And kalim is what? Jarh, wound. The Arabic language is to wound something, slice something. The tongue can slice you, man. Actually, words can sometimes do things to you that the body can't, physical pain might not do to you. صح? If somebody says to you, you're incompetent, you're weak, you're da'if, you're nothing, you're insignificant, and they keep saying that, and they drill that into you, that will destroy you, will it, will it not? That's why we should watch what we say to people. Okay? And also, because some cultures, like my people, MashaAllah Barik, Somalis Allah Barik, they like to say the harshest of words and not take into consideration people's feelings. And when the person says, I, I'm feeling pain of what you said to me, they're like, You're so weak. Is that like that in the Asian community? Yeah? In the Afghan is like that, yeah, yeah. Yes. Afghan's community okay, Somalis are like that as well. Somalis look at the person and if they find a deficiency in you, they name you that. Hatta even if the person is tall. And it's like a good, like he's tall, they would call him short. Gharib, sometimes. So, and all of this is, يعني, it's, so it's not a good thing. It's not a praiseworthy thing. Watch your words and what you say to people. Because you'll be questioned for it, Yom Al Qiyamah. And there's no need to say those words. Also, um, the Prophet's job is to convey the message, his job is not to get the results. I will tell the brothers, the results is in whose hands? Allah. That's what Allah Ta'ala said to him. وَمَا أَنْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ bijabbar. You're not the one who enforces them to take the message. إِنَّمَا عَلَيْكَ الْبَلَاغ Convey the message. Whether they accept it, whether they reject it, that's not your responsibility. And that's what a lot of people tend to fall short in. They want to get the results. Like it's not your job. Just leave it to Allah. You give the message and khalas, that's it. The last and final benefit that we take insha'Allah Ta'ala is how the Qur'an is a reminder. فَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مَنْ يَخَافُ وَعِيدٌ And I want to say this, brothers. How much lessons did we just take from one surah of the Qur'an? We don't need now. We don't need lectures and reminders. We don't need talks that don't have the Qur'an in it. But we should, at this point as Muslims, we should wake up and realize. If someone's going to give us a lecture, it's going to give us a reminder, it's going to call us to Allah, we want this. صح? Ayat being mentioned to us. We want a hadith mentioned because that's where the reminder lies. فَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ Remind them, Muhammad, with the Qur'an. Sahih brothers. A khutbah that from the beginning to the end there's no ayah or hadith mentioned. Ish And he's telling you his own personal perceptions and how he sees things. So فَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مَنْ يَخَافُ وَعِيدٌ And that's what saved this ummah. It's when they held on to this book. Inshallah, wallahi brothers, wallah. I could never, no human being can anyways, give justice to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But today, what we gave was just a little point here and there regarding this beautiful surah. Okay, brothers. Um, so inshallah ta'ala, I ask Allah for forgiveness for my shortcoming and my mistakes. Anything I've said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Just come go into the lines and make sure you fill the spaces as you are, inshallah ta'ala. Yeah.